Yo, what's up, guys? I'm back with a brand new track. Yes, indeed. And without further ado, as opposed to ado, because I'm a fancy Frenchman and I like saying things wrong, like I did when I was a kid. I legit thought it was a D when I was younger, as opposed to a D O, which is what it actually is. Anyway, it's 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, or is it Aegis, or is it Aegis, or is it Aegis? I don't know what it is. Never heard it actually said out loud. It's published by Atlas and in turn published by Sega. And it's developed by Vanillaware. I love Vanillaware. I've played, you know, Mermasa the Demon Blade through legit means. And I've also uh, played um, Odin Sphere a little bit, although it doesn't run very well on legit PS3 hardware. As well as Dragon Crown it doesn't run very well on that legit PS3 hardware. I want to play Guilty Crown, which is illustrated by the same artist who does all the main art for Vanilla War games. But speaking of art, the art in this game is great, but the problem is, the problem with the art is that's mostly just a visual novel. The gameplay primarily being like this grid-based, non-visually impressive tactical game. If you've ever seen that Sung One video about like games that have radically different gameplay and, and visual style as opposed to like, you know, like the one where it's like playing with the little dots, like doo -doo 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 -doo. it's kind of like that. I watched the Yahtzee Crow Shot video on it and it's really accurate. Like I, I was surprised by how, how right he got it. But I guess I shouldn't be because he's a legit great reviewer. This game is actually pretty freaking around. Rad. Yeah, although on um, the story is insane, batshit crazy. And I don't expect it to get any less uh, sane. Overall, I would say uh, 13 Sentinels is a great game. I haven't got very far in it, but that's going to be a common trend throughout the video is that I'm not going to be having played very many of these games to completion um, or any of them at all, actually. There's like weird, creepy sex shit. Like, like for some reason, they're naked. It's, it's really weird. I don't like it. But anywho, oh, and speaking of that, Grim Grimoire is a game that I plan on owning on Switch at some point. I would love to own it, but I, I just unfortunately cannot at, at this time because there is no English port yet of the game on Switch. Switch, and uh, I'm not gonna play it through legitimate means. Uh, and I'm gonna wait for the physical to come out in America, which is like this May, if I'm not mistaken. So you're gonna notice that there's a lot of Japanese and Asian releases that I bought. And I have another one coming in, it's Skyward Sword. It's a Hong Kong release straight from Hong Kong. Next up, following the manual hype, we have uh, Akiba's Trip HD. Hellbound and Debriefed, as in like pants, ha ha ha, very funny. Uh, this game is interesting. I have a little bit of history with this game. Uh, I used to own a PSP. Unfortunately, that PSP is rest in pepperoni. Uh, and the PSP itself was homebrew modified. It ran custom firmware. And this game, I don't know if you knew this, it was exclusive to the PSP in the Japanese region. Now, uh, eventually it did get ported over to the West, but during the meantime, somebody was able to get a, uh, a legal ISO of it, and I was able to put it legally onto my normal firmware on PSP and play it. I didn't really like it back then, so again, I thought nothing of it. This game, alongside the CD, which I did cover in my CD video and an art book, were all packaged into a special edition going for like dirt cheap. We're talking like, I think like 20 bucks in total for all that package. And I'm like, hell yeah. But the thing is, um, it took freaking forever to come. Eventually I just ordered it from a third party seller just to get it to come here. And it did. But yeah, I, I got the box. I got the uh, CD and the art book. I, I'm getting rid of the box and the art book because I don't need all that freaking ridiculous space taking up my shelf. I mean, it was like absurd. I'll, maybe I'll show a picture. It was like, how do you fit that on a Switch shelf? Like, honestly, the game itself was uh, quite all right. Uh, upon first uh, playing. It reminds me a bit of uh, Yakuza mixed with like some low budget kind of like uh, like PS2 era with a bit of like that PSP sort of anime style game that kind of permeated the, the scene back then. I mean, it's quite nice. Uh, it's not the best, but honestly, it's it's worth just a, just a guilty pleasure play, truth be told. Next is a bit of an offshoot, something random. It's the Akiba Strip HD original soundtrack. This came with my uh, Switch copy of uh, Akiba's Trip HD. It's a good game. I mean, soundtrack's all right. It just came with the game. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have bought it on its own. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nice sort of uh, soundtrack. I mean, nothing special. I mean, it fits the game also that much. I mean, it, there's no real standout track on it. Uh, it's just a nice collectible, I guess. I mean, I, I didn't pay anything extra to get it, so I'm not too upset about it. You know, the, the collector's edition I bought was way cheaper than any other version I could have got. 
So honestly, I'm not complaining. So I've decided to record another part, and this part is covering Astral Chain. It is a platinum game, and believe it or not, before recording, I thought I only had one in this collection of games, but turns out it's actually three. I own three Platinum games. Now that's not all the Platinum games on Switch, but that's a decent chunk of them, you know? I don't own Bayonetta 1, 2, and 3, and I don't own The Wonderful 101, but I own two others, and you're gonna have to find out which ones they are, so there you go. Astral Chain is a great game. It's not exactly your traditional sort of beat em up with because of the whole chain element, but it is your typical Platinum of affair otherwise, if you take that out of consideration, because you can play the game without Without entirely relying on the chain, you know, I'm just gonna have a bad time. Uh, I've customized quite a bit. I did all the training. I did very well, and uh, it's a fun game. Uh, I'm of course uh, playing as the girl because uh, girl power. Am I right? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sounds like I don't like girl power. I, I'm okay with girl power. I don't know why the hell I <laughs> said it like I don't like girl power. That's funny. I hate Hideki Kimiya though. He's a fucking see you next Tuesday. He's so awful. I hate him. That guy is a piece of shit. So any sort of sort of haha, it's so funny that he blocks people and that he only speaks in Japanese despite the fact he knows English and all that. So no, it's it's not clever, it's not cute, it's annoying, he's a fucking asshole. That's enough for any about Hideki Kimia. On to the game. The game itself is uh, graphically very good. I am actually surprised by how graphically good it was. Reviews said it was kind of fidelity-wise not that impressive. But it basically looks like a PS3 game, a late PS3 game slash Xbox 360 game. And in my opinion, that's just fine. I mean, if you can play that portably, that's wonderful. I don't really care all that much about it not looking the visually the best. Although, Switch could use a refresh because there's some games that just don't perform the best and never will perform the best. What's up, guys? It's Live Back. Matt here, here to report on some pew, 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 pew. breaking news. I, in fact, did buy a physical Switch game recently as well as replaced the Hades case. Let me show that off. Bada bing, bada boom skis. As you can see, I've organized my Switch games in this nice little container right here. I have two more just like it. If we look right here, we have the game in question that I uh, physically bought. It's Astria Ascending. I also did some recategorizing. Uh, a Magical High School Girl is now with the M's. So the first game in, in, on the uh, shelf is Akiba's Trip. This game is uh, similar to a Final Fantasy game made by a lot of the same people. Kind of reminiscent of 12 and art style, as well as sort of like a vanillaware, but massively tweened and kind of wiggly and budgetly uh, low if you know what i'm saying not exactly the highest uh, quality animation but i do like it i do like the way it looks the art is very nice uh the graphics are great in my opinion the gameplay is uh pretty cool i haven't played that much of it but it's a nice turn-based rpg system and i like the card game that's associated with it i think it's really cool anyway so that's astria ascending okay next game up is astro aqua kitty possum collection i know possum yuck Terrible pun, but it's uh, developed by Tiki Pod, and unfortunately, if you look right here, it says limited run. I know I broke my promise. I said I'd never buy from limited run again, but here's my caveat. Okay, hear me out. It's basically impossible to boycott things nowadays, especially considering some of my favorite games get physicals through limited run. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to order from their website ever again. I'm not pre-ordering anything, even on Amazon or Best Buy or whatever when it comes to Switch games. I've learned my lesson. I'm not using it ever again, but I will if a game is on Amazon or Best Buy and it's a decent price and it comes relatively quickly, I will order it off of those websites, but I will not buy third party, you know, resellers. I know that's not really much of a boycott, I guess. Uh, Astro Aqua Kitty is uh, a, a dual pack with Aqua Kitty UDX, which I own the original. It was called Aqua Kitty Milk Mine Defender. I got it on Humble Bundle years ago. I'm talking like almost 10 years ago at this point, it has to be. So yeah, it's probably like eight or seven since I've played the original. The music is quite wonderful. It's like some of the best music I've ever heard in an indie game. I'm probably using some videos and you might not even have noticed. The original Aqua Kitty game is a, is a Defender clone. That's why the subtitle in the original was Milk Mine Defender. And uh, yeah, I played quite a bit of it on PC and I actually played more of it on uh, Switch than I have the actual game in question that I wanted this uh, package for, which is Astro Aqua Kitty. They describe it on the box as an all new action RPG shoot 'em up adventure. But to me, it's kind of like something similar 
course, if you've ever played Pixel Junk Shooter, I haven't gotten very far in that portion of this collection. It's it's good, it's good. But more importantly, Manual Squad Hype. Yep, we're bringing it back, baby. First one of the bunch, and there's gonna be quite a few. Maybe not quite a few, but there's gonna be a decent amount. Trust me. So yes, um, this is the first of a few Manual Squad Hype moments. Be sure to tally them and. Uh, Give me your results at the end in the comments if you if you can. But you won't. I know you won't. This is this will get barely any views at all. That's okay. I don't care. I don't do these for uh, views. I do these for fun because I'm a bu 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 boss. Oh, and the graphics are nice. I uh, but I mean for the most part, you know, 2D games are pretty good looking. There's a few exceptions. Like hell, there's some I featured on my channel. Like uh, what's the name of the game? Draw Rider, which is literally just stick figures, but that has its own appeal in, in, in a way. I'm not much of a visual fidelity kind of guy, except for if it runs like ass and if it looks like shit. That's the only time I'll criticize something. If it, if it looks good enough and if it runs just fine, I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I've become more picky over the years simply due to the fact that uh, I've grown up you know and realized how much effort it takes to make a game and that some shortcuts were made in certain games and that publishers just rush it out the door and it pisses me off i forgot to show the manual what the hell is my problem dude here is the lovely lovely manual Moving on, we have Axiom Verge 2 by Limited Run. Those greedy bastards, them. Yeah, hopefully they don't see this so they don't cancel my order that I still have from them, but I'm never ordering from them again. Never, they're a scam, I tell you, a scam. Yeah, Axiom Verge 2 is good. Uh, I, I didn't like the first game. I, I like the second game though. And if you wanna see the manual, baby, well, here it comes. Manual time, let's go, baby. Yeah, it's freaking hype. Anyway, uh, oh, wait till you see the Dusk manual. That shit's pathetic. That's also from Limited Run. That's gonna come up very soon. I just got that. Anyway, um, Axiom Verge 2 is a great Metroidvania. I'm not typically very much into Metroidvanias, but I think this Metroidvania is pretty good, all things considered. But in general, uh, I tend to avoid Metroidvanias uh, because they just don't typically strike my fancy. But, the, but Axiom Verge 2, I like. Now, it, there was a package that came with Axiom Verge 1 and 2, and there's the one that just came with one. I just went with the one that came with two because I just wanted two. I mean, I know that sounds silly, but I mean, it was cheaper and I wanted it. So there you go. Um, but it doesn't matter because we're never ordering from them ever again. Uh, no more uh, Spotlight for you, Axiom Verge. And no more Spotlight for you, Limited Run, until the next one. Arr. This is yet another limited kind of game except for this is one i previously never even heard of called red art games and it's butcher the funny thing about this game is it goes on sale for like five dollars i paid like an exorbitant amount of money definitely the cheapest game digitally that i own in my collection so don't pick it up physically just buy it digitally it's super cheap on switch it's one of the few actual games that wasn't marked up to high heaven on Switch. Uh, although I, I say that though, but prices have been better recently, I want to say. Uh, but Butcher is like uh, is like a mix between uh, Duke Nukem Classic Duke Nukem, not like the not like the FPS, like the platformer, and uh, it's pretty good. It's got that Doom violence from like the 2016 version that I really like. It's like brutal as hell. It's kind of like uh, another game you'll see eventually. That being, uh, Carry On! Thank you. The name of the game is Carry On. It's similar to that. Except for, obviously you don't play as a giant monster, but similar art style and simil similar level of gore. No manual! Like, no bitches, get it? Yeah, uh, no manual for this one. Cadence of Hyrule, the first of many Nintendo published titles in my collection. Although this is technically not even published by Nintendo, it's published by Brace Yourself Games. But it is a Nintendo property, let's put it that way. First of many Nintendo properties. Uh, this one, uh, I have not played very much. I feel bad about it, but I mean, the, the dancing segments are very hard to get used to. I, I don't have the best rhythm when it comes to that, but I love uh, old school Zelda. I mean, I, I've only recently gotten into it. Uh, another game that I have in my collection, Link's, uh, Link's Awakening, I really like. So you'll, we'll get to that. But uh, Cadence of Hyrule, uh, I got it at a... Uh, Meyer, believe it or not. I got it at Meyer for super cheap. It was on clearance clearance, and so I got it for about like 
like twenty dollars. I want to say, which is typically not what it goes for. Oh yeah, and wait till you see the next game I got from Meyer. That game I got is a uh, just 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 steal. Games of Hyrule, uh, great music, uh, great gameplay. But other than that. Uh, not much to say about it. Nothing, not, no cool story associated with this one. Or any bashing or anything of the sort. The Caligula Effect Deuce. I've never played the Caligula Effect 1. Uh, this is an NIS release. This is one of many you will see from NIS. I love collecting their games. They are kind of expensive though. But, uh, I do like collecting them. This one's kind of a disappointing one. Because if you look inside, it just got, like, a few little inserts. And no real manual, which is real disappointing. It's one of those kind of budget NIS releases for... For sure. So honestly, uh, yeah, the, the game itself, story-wise, it sucks. Um, the gameplay is very good. It's kind of like a uh, half real-time, half turn-based RPG, sort of like an active RPG system, you know, turn-based-wise, that is. Uh, and I do like the power-ups and uh, not exactly the music, but the music itself though is also very annoying. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't that expensive and uh, it's actually one of the cheaper NAS releases and uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'll keep it, why not, you know? And anyway, uh, moving on, we have uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Yes, uh, another Nintendo uh, release. This one is indeed published by Nintendo, unlike the last one. It's very cute, it's very uh, Nintendo-like, it's definitely one of the most nintendo esque Nintendo games to release in a while. Uh, it's obviously based off the Super Mario uh, 3D World uh, levels, which I don't have Super Mario 3D World. I want it, but I don't have it yet. Spoilers. I even bought the DLC. I know. Crazy, right? Uh, me buying DLC. The game itself is, was actually not that expensive. Uh, believe it or not, most of the Nintendo-related products I did not pay that much for. I usually got them on, on sale. The only one I didn't is my first Nintendo Switch game, that being uh, Breath of the Wild. But I, I think that's worth the money I paid for it, truth be told. Because that game is a freaking masterpiece. Uh, sorry to spoil well, that one. I, I feel like it would have been better to play on the Wii U, but who knows. Maybe on, maybe even on the 3DS, I have no idea. But overall, uh, not bad. It's Carry On. I hate that song. I don't even know why I sang it. Carry On. I mentioned it earlier on this video. Carry On is, uh, this one has, uh, speaking of Manual Squad, this one has a beefy manual. One of the beefiest in my entire collection. This one is a Devolver published game, which I guess makes it limited, but not really, though. It's, it's just like a, you know, a physical release by Devolver. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. I mean, I haven't beaten it yet. I know it's a short game, so criminal, right? I haven't beaten it. It's 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 pretty brutal, and I do like the gameplay loop. Thankfully, I've heard it doesn't get too long, so it doesn't get tiring, but I can see why people would say it, it wouldn't make a great long game and more of a short game, but based on what I've heard, they've also teased sort towards a, a sequel, so who knows. Uh, yeah, um, I look forward to playing it more. Uh, I love the art style. The art style is fantastic, and I also love the dingy, grungy atmosphere. is really nice. And overall, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was a solid release. I got it at my local uh, local CD store, which is also a game store, which is also a, a vinyl and DVD and all that stuff. Uh, I bought that there, and I got it for a decent price. I got a brand new seal. Next up is yet another Japanese game. That's right, it's NTC, or sorry, NTSCJ. That's what we're talking about. And it's Chocobo Mystery Dungeon, everybody. Put the actual title on screen because this, it is in Moon language, so I don't know what it actually says. This is actually a remaster or a repackage of a Wii game that I actually did play through a legitimate means. It's actually a pretty cool game. I own several Mystery Dungeon games, and believe it or not, before recording, just like with the whole Platinum thing, I did not realize this, but I have three Mystery Dungeon games I'm going to show in this video as well as uh, the Platinum game. This is one of them. And yeah, I guess you could just call me a sucker for the Mystery Dungeon games. I would be a sucker for the Crazy Castle games if it wasn't for the fact they stopped making them. So there's that. I just like that kind of format. It's it's my jam. The story is very weird. It's kind of like a trip a little bit, but not as much as something like 13 Sentinels. Nothing beats that insanity. I think, I think the character designs are great and the actual Mystery Dungeon component is great. I wish Square Enix would put out more games like this that aren't either sequels to games that already exist or if if they are sequels just make them you know wholly fresh as opposed to just NFT bullshit or just remastering everything because that's all they put out that's good nowadays it's just either sequels to games like uh the world ends with you which i'm appreciative of or they just release remasters like the, the final fantasy uh crisis core uh re remaster as well as uh some other stuff but even then they don't always do that right for example like why the hell are the kingdom hearts games uh i, I, I get why three is cloud 
version, but why are the other ones the cloud version? That makes no sense. You could have easily ported one and two to an actual in-engine thing that runs on Switch. You could easily have done it, but they didn't for some reason. I also like the Legend, Legend of Mana game as well as the, the li li Live Alive, like 2D masterpiece, whatever remake. I like all the retro ports, you know, covering all those SNES and NES games, but I just wish they would put out new shit or sequel to shit that we want. Like, besides something obvious like Parasite Eve, there's stuff like, um, you know, Brave Fencer Musashi that gets no love whatsoever. Oh yeah, and Enix stuff, like Mischief Makers could use a sequel, that's that's Enix, why not do something with that? Uh, yeah, and moving on to the last Switch game before we switch into a whole different kind of pop culture thing, it's, uh, Clockwork Aquario. Yes, Clockwork Aquario. It's a, uh, it's a Strictly Limited game, which I didn't buy through Strictly Limited, I, buy it through, I, I bought it through Enix, through Play Asia, so I hope I didn't get many money. Maybe I did, but uh, yeah, it's a freaking arcade game reconstructed from uh, source code that was previously lost or uh, unobtainable due to you know licensing. They bought it from Sega, they completed it, they sold it. It's a pretty bare bones package. It's not exactly the most uh, you know premium package, so that's certainly true. But it's a freaking rad game. Oh, and by the way, uh, none of these games have manuals. No manual squad hype today. I'm sorry to say, nothing changed about my face at all. Cruel King and the great hero the cruel king and the great hero yes this is the next game it is baby's first rpg by nis uh america Ichi software and they're kind of a dying business honestly the only way i could buy it new was to buy a limited edition it came with a plush uh that uh got chewed up by my new puppy emmett he's a cute little boy i might put a picture of him up on screen who knows it got chewed up by him because he stole from my room and, he, and i didn't want to give it back but more importantly it came with uh an art book let me just show the back you'll know that it does come with a code but it is an art book slash storybook let me show you some art let me show you some story so let's see if i can show you some uh some art right here there you go let's show some story some story which is right here look at that uh, the game has great graphics it comes with a dub turned on at first which so does the chocobo game chocobo only has the dub but thankfully this does have a sub but you have to uh specifically turn it on like once you get past a certain point so of course you're gonna have to listen to the shitty english dub because for some reason these companies think we want to listen to these half rate voice actors except for the ones that i like like the aforementioned sung one or i also like young yeah and i also like uh connor uh sea dog uh v Yay, so there you go. Hot take. Pew, 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 pew. Boop, boop. It's Future Matt here, here to tell you that during the recording and making of this video, I couldn't control myself. I bought another game. This is actually a few days later, so we're out of order alphabetically, but it's Cruise and Blast. Yes, it's the Cruisin' Game. The new one from Nintendo as well as Raw Thrills, I guess is what they're called, I guess. It's a racing game. It's a cruising game. It's got that sort of burnout, you know, crashing other cars thing. It's got that classic arcade sort of uh, Sega Rally sort of going, going across various terrains. It's got all sorts of stuff. I mean, it's freaking cruising, yeah, yeah. Cruising Blast. I got it for $18 at Best Buy. I had a $5 coupon, otherwise it would have been like 20 something. Either way, it was on sale, so I said I had to have it. It's kind of resembling a cruising game. It's based off an arcade game from Nintendo that wasn't made by them. They haven't made an actual arcade game since uh, that's like a Punch Out parody, you know, like arm wrestling, super arm wrestling, I think is what it was called. It has an annoying song where they go cruising throughout the menu. This is kind of a sporadic entry. I'm sorry. We're done talking about cruising. Uh, this has been a hectic entry. This one is an interesting release because uh, this one was a Russian uh, release of Damon X Machina. It came with the CD that I included in my first CD video. So yeah, that, that's that's the backstory of that, which if you saw my first CD video, which I will link somewhere above here, uh, that'll, that'll explain where exactly the CD came from and where exactly the, the game came from and why it took so long and, you know, the ongoing war between Russia and uh, Ukraine and all that stuff. And I already said my, my piece on that. So if you want to watch that, go ahead. But yeah, the game itself is, uh, is good, but not a 
amazing. I was expecting a bit better. Marvelous is, are kind of jerks when it comes to like what gameplay and what music and whatnot you can post, so I'm not exactly for that. And I think the fact that they charge so much money for the cosmetics is quite the uh, insult to me. I think honestly, I mean, if you're buying a physical, it, it should come with all that stuff anyway. I mean, the game's already like, what, like $60? I mean, Jesus. And the PC version isn't much better either. And uh, graphically, it's kind of eh, whatever. But you know, I mean, the gameplay wise, it makes up for it. But yeah, I can see why so many people skip this one. Although really, this is just a, a European release disguised as a Russian release. And the way you can tell, I don't know if you can see this because it's kind of hard. No, you can see it. You can see it. Um, there's a little bitty like triangle here and that indicates that it's a Euro European release because Peggy releases have like little color indicators to indicate what the rating of the game is, which in this case it would be Peggy uh, 12. Anyway, this is the next album I got, which is also an import. It's because it came with a Russian, and I believe it or not, I actually got this before the Russian-Ukraine war, like two weeks right before Russia invaded Ukraine. I mean, it's crazy my timing and I got it like right before uh the russian post shut down like it is insane my timing on this one and I, and I and i wish the guy who sent me it well i mean it sucks that he has to live in russia as well as my friend fm out there i miss you buddy i hope i can talk to you soon uh yeah peace to the people who have to deal with that terrible regime and peace to the people in uh ukraine it's a shitty situation all around i mean you got two governments fighting each other really shouldn't be Anyway, moving on, we have uh, Damon X Machina, the soundtrack to this. This is a uh, sampler pack, contains five tracks. Uh, they're, they're pretty good tracks, although they're not the best. A lot of them kind of feel sort of background video gamey, but there's a few that feel pretty good. I mean, I would say if I were to pick, I'd probably say Overkill and uh, Damon X Machina, the, 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 the title track, I'd say are probably the good, the two really good uh, tracks off the album, if I, if I were to say out of the five that are given. Let's move on to the next game. That being a game which has a little DVD insert, it's uh, Darius Burst EX Plus Another Chronicle. And if you saw my community post, which nobody did, uh, but if you saw it, I mentioned that I also pre-ordered from Strict Limited another promise that I broke. Uh, I've always wanted to play Darius Burst. I, it originally came out on the PSP first. It was actually first arcade, but then it, it was first ported to the PSP in Japan. Always too expensive to import it. And then, you know, it came out for PC and it was still way too expensive. And it came out for Switch, way too expensive. And, uh, but eventually I decided, you know what, screw it, I'll just buy the physical but then I realized there was a second physical that will go along with it. I'm like, I've already spent a certain amount of money, might as well spend more money and end up costing more if I had just bought it digitally. So yeah, uh, whoop de freaking do. I know I'm, I'm, I'm a silly boy, aren't I? The game is a shoot 'em up. I love shoot 'em ups. Uh, yep, Inning, by the way, is the company that published this. Which I found out that Indian's kind of just a shell company for uh, freaking Strictly Limited anyway. So all the time I was saying, Indian's great. Turns out I was supporting Strictly Limited anyway. So sucks for me. Yeah, the game itself is like a really, really wide uh, perspective based on the arcade. And uh, it's just like a boss rush sort of uh, shoot em up. It's not going to blow your socks off. It's not amazing, but it is quite a good shoot em up. But I haven't played much of it, and I will play more. I guarantee you I will. It also comes in a four player. I don't have friends, so. Never gonna play for a player, but that's that's uh that's just one little problem. Who cares about that? Am I right? Bada bing, bada boom. Let's move on to the next game. In this next set, first up we have Darksiders Genesis. You know, for some reason in my head, I thought this had a ridiculous spelling, like Genesis spelled with a Y or something, or maybe Darksiders was spelled different, but it isn't. Uh, this is a THQ Nordic game. It's like a Diablo clone, but uh, with Darksiders, which is the the Eternal uh, aping off series where they always ape off something else. Uh, yeah, uh, Darksiders Genesis. I already own this on Steam. I also own it on Switch because it was cheap. Haven't played too much of it. Played about the same as I played on PC. Haven't been that far into it. It's fun for what it is, but it's your typical THQ Nordic game where it's definitely more of a double A game as opposed to a triple A and not exactly as charming as the indies. But it runs pretty well on Switch. I mean, there's no real performance issues or anything like that. I, I, overall, I would say there's not much really to it. Uh, I, I don't really follow the Darksiders plot, so I don't really know what goes on in those games, but people like it, I know, and some people don't. Depends on game to game, really. Anywho, next up we have Death Smiles 1 and 2 Collection for the Nintendo Switch, but this time in Asia, more specifically, Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, you know, 
stuff like that. Uh, this one's interesting because let me let me show you a little bitty thing here. You notice this right here? It has little uh, it has little flaps. All Asian releases of uh, Switch games have these little extra little flaps on the end. I thought that was interesting to note. Uh, this one, as you can tell, let me show you. Yep, it's definitely Asian. And if you look inside, it's got a little pretty cover of uh, very young girls. Going back to those bastards, Strictly Limited, they were selling it on their website for an exorbitant cost. If you went on Play Asia and you got the Asian copy, uh, it was significantly cheaper. Uh, than just buying it from their website and plus you wouldn't have to wait as long either even though you know they were already in stock but like I mean it just took less time because PlayAsia actually has good shipping times despite being based out of Hong Kong it's a shoot 'em up more accurately it's a cute 'em up it's a horizontal cute 'em up uh, with a bit of like gothic horror it's made by uh, City Connection and Cave Cave is the word I'm looking for Cave are classic shoot 'em up developers they're one of my favorites besides like obviously Treasure and uh, you know a few others that I uh, and forgetting the name of off the top of my head. But yeah, I really like cave shooters and Death Smiles happens to be one of the ones you can get physically. There's other ones too, but like the Mura he, Murasama Hime-sama or whatever the frick it's called, I don't remember. I'll put it up on screen somewhere, the actual name and box art. But that game is limited run and, and as you I've, as I've already established, I'm not getting limited run. I don't think it has an Asian release. If it does, I just haven't bought it yet. Maybe I will, who knows. And plus I already own that on Steam and uh, that Steam release is a lot better than the Steam Steam release for Death Smiles. Uh, off subject aside, now the game itself is actually very, uh, very well playing when it comes to my uh, arcade stick, which let me pop it out right now so I can show you how I play Death Smiles 1 and 2. With one of these bad boys, and I hook up the wire to this little controller right here, I'm able to play uh, shoot 'em ups. Hear that? That's uh, clicky, it's a square uh, stick. Hear that? That's buttons, and that's how I freaking play the game. And it's wonderful when you play it like that, and the button layout is natural to this actual controller, despite the fact it's a PS3, PS4 controller, made by Mad Cats. Actually, a good product made by Mad Cats. But I'm not here to review a controller, I'm here to review a game. And the game itself, like I said before, is a great shooter. Short, comes with a lot of different variations of the same game, so it's very replayable. And, uh, it, it's, there's a bit of a language gap, and there's some, like, ridiculous, there's like this ridiculous, like, 30 to $40 DLC for, like, some anime characters that don't come with the package that you pay for physically which I think is ridiculous and they don't really add very much they're just like playable characters that like pretty much play almost identically to all the others I don't know why exactly they felt like adding them but then taking them back and like charging ridiculous prices for them I mean come on overall City Connection actually did a good job porting this to Switch now I've heard that, like I said before I've heard the PC port is something that lacks nuance and customizability and there's frame rate issues but I've experienced none of those things on Switch it's it's perfect for what it is on Switch and I know you can play it on Xbox 360 but that copy is pretty expensive and uh, and unless you own an arcade machine this is pretty much the best way to play it but I would say probably either get it from PlayAsia I think it's a decent price or just buy it uh, digitally and do not buy the DLC they're trying to scam you people they're trying to scam you next up is a game I have mentioned before I mentioned that I ordered this from limited run it took forever to come but it finally came and I'm coming it's demon turf yes indeed and unlike the last limited run game I ordered uh, this one came with a beefy manual a freaking beefy one there is a point of contention I should say um, I ordered it and I was thinking it's probably gonna come with the neon splash game that came out alongside it you know almost around the same time as this this was being pre-ordered so uh, I thought you know they're gonna include it you know that would be a great package no they didn't in fact guess what this came with the base version of the game you have to install like a gigabyte pa a patch for this and they couldn't even bother to put in the other game they did it for dust they included dusk 82 or whatever it's like why couldn't they have incorporated freaking demon turf neon splash what the hell is wrong with those people and by the way i want to quickly mention something because i was supposed to mention this in earlier parts of the video but um when it comes to games like astral chain and the chocobo game i ordered them off of, of a site called surugaya.com surugaya.com is my new favorite website to order from japanese uh for to order Japanese games. They're not perfect because some of the problems I have with them is that you can't 
find out what the games look like if they're new you know until you order them you have to order in bulk because the shipping is kind of expensive so typically you have to order at least like a hundred dollars worth of stuff in order to get good deals there's like they have these annoying ass stickers that you have to take off they're like gamestop quality stickers from back in the day if you remember that but yeah um there's there's some annoying caveats but at the same time sometimes you get brand new games and we even they, even they claim they're used because everything on the website is supposedly used comes quick for me it comes within a week the packages comes really nicely packed so when it comes to uh and there's gonna be other games i'm going to be showing but for now let's focus on the games in question astral chain was basically the equivalent of 3828 the uh, chocobo game i got for around 34 dollars and eight cents if you do the math and that game also goes for a decent chunk of change this is not sponsored by them this is just unpaid promotion and if you're on sponsor block uh just mark this as unpaid promotion so you so you can skip it i don't give a shit anyway demon turf is a platformer by one of my favorite developers for braz he made another game that i don't remember what it's called but i'll put up on screen whatever it is it's a fantastic game it's one of the best games for its price range in my opinion since then he's made something with platonic it's like a physics-based really sleek platformer and I actually played the non-patch version it was kind of shit but then when I updated it it felt fantastic seriously this game has come quite a long way from its initial version next up is Digimon Cyber Sleuth and this is another game that I own on Steam it's really addictive it's actually like too addictive it's an RPG, like uh, like some other entries on this uh, collection video. And uh, overall, uh, the story is whatever. I do kind of like skim the story, unlike the last RPG on this list. So I do have a vague recollection of what the actual plot is. I won't go into it because God knows this video is going to be hella long. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Digimon Cyber Sleuth. Uh, I have one interesting tidbit about this game. Uh, when I went to GameStop, an undisclosed GameStop. I'm not gonna like dox myself or them for that matter. Uh, yeah, so I went to this GameStop and I had just enough money to buy it. So I went to buy it and it came in this case on the display. The guy took that case, like put it somewhere else and gave me a replacement case. And I didn't notice till I popped out and I'm like, this is not the case I bought. So I went in and just said like, hey dude. And I was kind of peeved off. I was like, hey dude, give me the freaking case. And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, you know, you know what you did. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't do it that rude, but it wasn't exactly nice either. And eventually he gave me the right case after uh, some pushing to do it. But yeah, the game itself, uh, not much to talk about. Uh, it has a very addictive sort of uh, leveling up system and combining system and if you've ever played any Digimon games or if you've ever uh, watched any of the anime you you know how it goes by the way the whole title of the game is a uh, Digimon story cyber sleuth complete edition I did not say that in the beginning but if you want to look it up that's what it's called uh, do I recommend getting it on Steam or switch uh, either or it's a it's a it's jump ball in my opinion I think you can go with one or the other and there's nothing wrong with it next up is Dog World. Believe it or not, this is yet another limited type company that I've yet to talk about. It's super rare. The reason why I haven't really talked about them yet is because one, it hasn't come up, and two, even if it did come up, I wouldn't have much to say because this is the only limited company that I've used more than once that I actually have decent experience with. I mean, I've not experienced any issues with them. I've not had any weird shipping errors and then lack of communication. I've not had ridiculous prices and long wait time. It's a good company. Uh, the only thing I will say that I don't like about Super Rare is that they, uh, they have like this only physical kind of thing they do every once in a while where they release games physically only on switch and then they release them on itch.io later on but i don't know that kind of rubs me the wrong way anyway uh basically with dog world it's kind of like cave story actually it looks a lot like cave story mixed with like undertale visually but it's definitely more inspired by cave story or caro blaster or whatever uh and you basically go into a town of dogs similar to how in cave story you go into a town of amigas and uh you uh save the world or whatever uh there's really not much else to say except for there's one thing except for there's one thing i will say that i haven't said before uh and that is that the aliasing on the portable uh, version the one that you play portably is very noticeable and it doesn't exactly scale properly even though it's a pixel game you think they get that right uh, and it hasn't been patched at all so who knows if they'll ever fix that and uh, let's let's actually get one more in there let's get another one because this is also a Surugaya game this is Dragon Quest Treasures um and uh, it's it's like a little you know action RPG slash 
sort of collectathon sort of thing. And uh, it's nice. I actually like it. Um, I know I was cr crapping on Square Enix for not doing anything new, but this is not exactly new, but I do like it. Yeah. It's like way cheap when compared to how much it costs, you know, to get in America. Um, it's like 20, 29, 71 is how much I end up paying for it. If you do the math, uh, this game is, this game is quite nice. Uh, the graphics are actually not that bad. Um, they're actually nice, believe it or not. Um, yeah. Um, this one had an option where I couldn't watch the opening cutscene without there being a shitty dub at, at first. And that's really nice. And of course they still have the crappy translation of like, Oh, it's Uzabella or freaking uh, goober. I don't know. It's some bullshit like that where it's like, God, it's like, it, why does every slime have to have a dumb cutesy name? It's like, geez, Louise, like you couldn't just go off what the literal Japanese translation is, or at least change the translation. If you're, uh, if you're not playing the dub, which they literally even say in the game, they're like, if you switch to a different language, it might, the subtitles might not be indicative of what they're actually saying. It's like basically saying like, we didn't bother switching the subtitles because we're lazy, uh, publishers who publish it in America. So fuck you. So yeah, that's another rant over. I don't know why. I guess I'm just kind of ranty today. So there you go. Next up is another evil limited run game ooga booga booga it's dusk yes this one is the one i mentioned that let me show it to you right away look at that freaking manual right here it is literally just this this is the manual that's included are you freaking kidding me i waited over a year just for this just for this jesus Freakity miggity Christ. That stuff is embarrassing, man. Freaking embarrassing. Uh, the game itself is actually pretty freaking nice. It's pretty freaking nice, dude. It's actually really good. The version improvements that they added for the Switch release make it quite the great purchase, despite there not being mouse and keyboard support. So yes, I would say absolutely purchase Dusk for Switch, but do not buy it from Limited Run, those greedy bastards them. I'm not ordering from them ever again. Ever again, I tell you, ever again. It is a quote-unquote boomer shooter. Yes, a boomer shooter. And a boomer shooter is basically just a uh, FPS, but in the old style of the 90s and early 2000s. This is definitely inspired by something like Blood or, uh, or uh, Shadow Warrior. Definitely those two games. Purchase it in some capacity. Maybe PC, maybe uh, Switch, maybe PS4, or whatever. Just buy it, dude. Next up is an actual, like, limited-based company, but not really, because they also sell out of Amazon and uh, Best Buy. But I guess so does Limited Run. You know, those greedy bastards. Etherborn. This one's the most boring out of any limited release, because guess what? There's nothing inside. Nothing. Freaking, that is so pathetic for a limited release. Nothing, just a pure white canvas on the inside? Are you kidding me? The game itself is a uh, beautifully graphics-wise puzzle game where you uh, switch dimensions and go up and down, you know, uh, Asherian sort of uh, landscapes and whatnot. Uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, worth the money I paid for it. How much did I pay for it? I don't know. I bought it at Best Buy. This one has sort of an interesting story attached to it in the sense that I went to Best Buy to buy it and then I went to the mall uh, near the Best Buy and uh, I got lost in the parking lot for like an hour and I ended up having to get somebody from security to drive me to my car because I was a dumbass and didn't know where I parked. So that's the little story I have to give about that. Next up is the second NIS game in my collection. It is Fallen Legion Revenants Vanguard Edition. And believe it or not, this one actually is not disappointing. It comes with a beefy ass manual, as expected. Look at how beefy this thing is. So beefy. On the back, it comes with a code. I'm not going to show you it, otherwise you would actually be able to use it. Let me show you the back of it. Here you go. Here's the back of it. You can't see the front of it or else you would have access to these wonderful music files. And then there's a technical support thingy. So yeah, it actually came with the soundtrack. It came with the manual and it came with a little thingy on the back. Let me show you the thingy on the back. See, 
little bitty poster that you could hang up if you wanted to, although why would you? Uh, yes, um, this is actually a sequel to a game that I've never played. I don't even know if it is on the Switch, but um, I don't know anything about the story. I barely played it. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's a turn-based sort of uh, RPG, but more of a uh, linear-based one with uh, like on on rails movement. The graphics are very nice. Uh, I would say. I wish I played more of this before I did this video, but you know, I have so many games to go through and don't have time to talk about all of them in great detail. But uh, this one was actually pretty decently priced uh, for a uh, NIS game. I think because nobody really wanted it. It's not exactly the most desirable game, but I like it. So uh, there's that. I have no idea if you can pick it up still because the problem with NIS releases, they tend to uh, go out of stock relatively quick and they tend not to restock them. Hence why once console generations are over, NIS games to be the most collectible you know that's that's how it goes stuff like the PSP or what have you you know so uh, there's that next up is fight crab fight crab fight crab fight crab yes indeed it is a fight crab by Mastiff published by them developed by Kalapa games it's kind of like a chip post game, equivalent to like a rage game. But I love it. I love it dearly. And it is indeed a game. And this does not have a physical in America. This is a Japanese exclusive physical. I bought it in America though. I got it from a seller in America who had a decent price for it. Uh, he actually shipped it in like a like a collector's little box that like people use to preserve things. It, it was in really nice condition. He, he took really good care of it. I love Fight Crab. If you've seen uh, some of my uh, second channel, shh, don't tell anybody to look up Mads Mitski if you want to see footage of this. The game is in English. There's only one game that uh, I own today that's from Japan or Asia that is uh, not in English and I'll tell you what it is because it's coming up soon and it really irritates me because it was lied to. It's one to two players, kinda. And Mastiff also published one of my favorite games, uh, in my opinion, very underrated game. It's called Guru Min. Uh, a monstrous adventure or something like that. They didn't make it, Nihon Falcon made it, but Mastiff published it and uh, good on them for doing it because they rule. I like them, and they also publish this. But it's not entirely crabs. You can play as lobsters and other crustaceans. So there you go. Meh. There's a lot of weapons too. You can shoot a gun, so that's all I need to know. Final Fantasy X and X-2. This is a Korean copy. You wanna look at this? This is in Korean. This is a different type of moon language. Maybe it's sun language, I don't know. Yeah, and it's in English, which uh, someone should add somewhere to some sort of wiki because, again, the Korean games, uh, the Korean games that come out in Korea, it's, it's very under-documented if they actually come out in English or not. They're not the same exactly as Asian releases, but this does come in English, and it's the same freaking game as the Japanese version, being that it comes with the entire game built in without a shitty patch that gives you 10 to uh not on the cartridge because square enix fucking sucks bro final fantasy 10 is pretty good i actually was not a fan of final fantasy when i was younger i tried playing final fantasy 6 and i got bored with it i think the only rpg i liked as a kid was earthbound and obviously pokemon but as i've gotten older i've become quite the rpg guy i thought now's the time to play final fantasy 10 and it's kind of nostalgic even though i never played it because i guess because it reminds me of kingdom hearts because there's that part in Kingdom Hearts where you do play with Final Fantasy X characters and it's it's around the same time similar similar graphics I think the same engine right um yeah it, it's it's pretty cool um to see game that I was missing out on although I've been told that 10 2 kind of ruins the ending of 10 so who knows whether or not I'll play it I probably will that's how I roll I, I like playing games that other people don't like you know because I'm a contrarian I'm Mary Contrary or I guess Gary Contrary the music is great and uh there's some, there's some music in here I forgot was from this game, you know? Uh, quite the very soundtrack throughout the game. Yeah, and I think this is Nobuo, Nobuo Uematsu, which is pretty cool. 
and the and the, uh, and the uh, remastered quality is quite good. The pre-rendered cutscenes in this game haven't aged a day. They still look freaking fantastic. Quality package overall. Next up is Fire Emblem Warriors. Yes, it's a Musou game. I believe I own a few Musou games, but I think this is the only one I own physically. It's a Fire Emblem game. I couldn't care less about the Fire Emblem characters, the lore, the plot, whatever. I just like Musou games, and this one as a Musou game is good. It's not the best Musou I've ever played, but it's pretty solid, dude. Pretty solid. I bought... Did I buy the DLC or did it come with free DLC? I don't exactly remember. I might have done both. I have no idea. Um, yeah, I'm not much into cosmetics, so if there was, I didn't really buy them, probably. Uh, yeah, I mean, it has amiibo support, so I use amiibos to, like, get little weapons and stuff. I like the weapon crafting. I like, I like the recruiting of characters and leveling up. I like the RPG light systems in the game. Uh, yeah, it's not exactly the hardest game. It's it's, it's it's not easy either you, you can definitely lose in the game uh but overall um not much to say about it other than that i know there's not a lot to say about some games in some games there's a heck of a lot to say about it so trust me strap in it's not gonna get any better we have two last games that i completely forgot about during recording that i got in between uh the last video i shot which was the uh games i need in my collection sort of thing which kind of proud of kind of not you know it's it's whatever i was i was really depressed back then seriously i was i'm doing a lot better now so yeah it's freaking ghost blade hd yeah it's ghost blade hd by East Asia saw. It's a shoot 'em up. It's actually like $15 when uh, when not on sale, which is kind of stupid, but it's whatever. What you going to do? But yeah, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. And I really do enjoy it. It's actually not that bad of a game. And uh, it's it's like actually a quality shoot 'em up, in my opinion. Although I wish it had an option for unlimited continue so I could actually beat the game. But I guess I just got to get good scrub. Don't mind the background. I forgot one last thing. That last thing is. Wait for it. Manual squad hype. I rest my case. Next up is Hades. Yes, indeed, Hades. Now, I'm gonna be real with y'all. Y'all, I know, right? Because I'm a southerner. Uh, Hades, uh, this version of Hades, is not the original cover, and it does not include a manual. Although, the original did include a manual, which I found out recently, which kind of irritates me. Because I thought I had a complete copy otherwise, but I do not. Dang, that stinks. Anyway, but yeah, I have a uh, illegitimate case for a legitimate copy of Hades. Hades is a uh, addictive uh, and very much the best game to come out of super giant um it's definitely worth the initial playthrough i don't really know if it's worth the extra playthroughs to get the extra story i don't really care about the story sorry i don't really care about this sort of greek fan fiction that they're writing but whatever what are you gonna do about it anyway uh yeah uh the cool thing is it, it has uh, cross compatibility save wise with your pc copy and your switch copy you can like transfer your save back and forth and at one point i had steam family share and so i was able to uh switch uh saves over over back and forth and play on the on the uh, Steam Family Share with my with my older brother. He had the game, I didn't, but I could only play it when he wasn't playing games. He was playing games pretty frequently. It was the summer, so you know how it goes. He's a teacher. This cover, believe it or not, was made before the game actually had a physical, which is why it doesn't exactly look very official. It says Nintendo eShop. I want to make sure that if I did get a cover, that it, it would be clear that I was buying a reproduction. So just so people knew if I sold it, that I wasn't selling them snake oil. So there's that. It, it was a hot, trendy thing for a little bit to play Hades. I kind of jumped on a little bit late, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I should have won Game of the Year, in my opinion, at the Game Awards. So uh, there is that. Don't even get me started on the Game Awards, though. I mean, come on. Call of Duty Mobile over Sayonara Wild Hearts for best mobile game. Blech. And for Hades, let's show you uh, what the actual case normally looks like. Now, the interesting thing about this is that Hades actually did come with a code for the band camp. And believe it or not, the code actually did work. I used it. I got a free soundtrack with, with the case that I bought. Let's show the manual right here, Manual Squad Hype. And it's a nice little art book sort of thing. 
and uh, yeah everything's complete it has the uh, little backing right here and uh, I, I still have the old case let me see if I can find that here's the old case right here as you can tell I'm not as nice as this spanking brand new new case that is freaking hype uh, this one is Haven it's another limited run release <laughs> This one took a decent little while. This is probably the shortest wait I had for a game. Uh, funny thing is, uh, I spilled uh, Coca-Cola Starlight flavor all over the game. <laughs> it probably has a few stains other places. I mean, it is water damaged after all. Uh, yeah, um, that kind of sucks, dude, truth be told. But the game is very glitchy. I'm surprised by how glitchy it was and how massive the patch was. That's another thing that's crazy. Limited Run claims to have like the, the complete copy before release. There's like a massive multi gigabyte patch for the switch release. What the frick dude? And it's not even feature complete And it's not even stable like what the frick and uh, you can tell that the the addition of like the two gay characters Whether you be girl and girl or boy and boy the counterparts that originally weren't that gender definitely uh, Were add-ons like post pandemic like one guy uh, me and my friend ended up finding out that, that this person had a French uh, Accent uh, the guy equivalent to what the girl would normally be and uh yeah it was kind of weird because like he uh he, he had like a like a steve suppressing a french accent and he sounded weird and the girl had like a very compressed audio that sounded way different than everyone else's recordings which were quite clearly in the studio so i thought that was interesting like how unprofessional it seemed and uh the story's really engaging though I, I think it's really mature and very laid out and there's and all of it is very great dialogue uh i'm actually very engaged with the plot i think it's very immersive and i like the way it's approached and i think you know i think the two uh females in my case the two girls in this relationship uh throughout the game are it's a very wholesome relationship i like the relationship the controls are super weird to this day i keep whenever i play it i keep going back and forth back and forth because the way that like the analog sticks work when you control it it's hard to explain but uh yeah i mean it's a great game but i wouldn't exactly recommend uh purchasing it from limited run or even on switch in general buy the pc port that's probably a way more stable and way better release truth be told so avoid the switch port entirely in my opinion lesson learned another h it's uh helmut the badass from hell this is also a reproduction uh, co uh what's it called not copy uh uh uh, slip slip in uh, just you know both of those uh, games that I, I showed Hades and helmet which have replacement uh, cases and uh, and uh, slip ins the cases are legitimate Nintendo switch cases I, I did not get reproduction cases I only got reproduction slips uh, but yeah, uh, Helmut is interesting because uh, one, it's it's your run-of-the-mill, uh, running gun sort of indie sort of uh, like over-the-shoulder thing like Smash TV. But it had like a code that you could use from a convention that you could like plug in and uh, play like a like a like a cheat or whatever. But they never end up doing any more codes. This game has never been updated, so it's one of the few Switch uh, physicals down which I can play base for the entirety of its lifespan i guess the developers abandoned it after the pandemic because it was developed shortly before the pandemic especially the switch port and uh it was originally a gamestop uh, exclusive release physically i don't know if it still is but i thought that was interesting uh, i picked it up at a, at a local uh game store a different game store than the one i've been talking about before there's two within the area that are uh, mom and pop uh and and that store also also sells uh dvds and whatnot as well but they're mostly just dvd blu-ray and a uh, video game as opposed to the other store being just a general collectibles store oh yeah and, the, and uh, the other the the store that i bought this from sells a lot of funko pops like way too many funko pops like jesus like i think they had to like unload inventory and just like donate them due to how freaking much they had it was insane so guys i couldn't control myself for the second video not in a row but in a decent little bit yeah for, uh, for sure um basically i have an impulse problem but i guess you're not surprised considering i do own 70 well now 71 uh switch games and you want to know what the 71st game is well i'll tell you it's freaking uh oops it's backwards let me try it again it's a uh, freaking uh hypnospace outlaw by fan gamer 
Uh, and by the way, Fangamer basically just gets uh, limited run sloppy seconds, which uh, is whatever. I mean, I don't really give a shit. I mean, I got it on clearance from Best Buy and I paid $17.11. That's how much I paid for this freaking game. Freaking sweet. I had to drive super far, like uh, way too far to justify the purchase, but yeah, my birthday's tomorrow. I'm gonna treat myself. Who cares? Anyway, uh, if you're curious, I'm turning 25. The less said about that, the better. Freaking open it up, baby. Let's go. You tell us in the background, it's Uniracers. It's a good game and I wish it got re-released, but the problem is stupid uh, freaking Pixar. I don't think they own the concept of a unicycle, but uh, I guess they do for some stupid reason. Yeah, and you're wondering how I'm playing this? Completely legally. God, this thing is like Fort Knox. Unsealed. And what's inside? Uh, shit, let me check real quick. Oh, it's an audio tour. What the hell is this? What the hell is this? What's this little thing? I was expecting a manual. I was not expecting a little mini CD. Holy crap. And it's a little ad too. Let me let me see this shit real quick. It's a little ad. It's from uh, from Hypnospace. Wow we. And uh, it came with the little little mini CD. Oh my god, that's so adorable. Oh my god, that's so cute. Holy crap. That's my genuine reaction. I had no idea that was in here. Look at it. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty right here. It's beautiful. It's freaking beautiful, man. Look at that. Look at that right there. I'm turning British for some reason. It makes me very happy. They have like, uh, they have like interviews and everything and they have like songs and oh my god, it's so cool. So yeah, if you're curious uh, what the inside looks like, it's right here. Uh, and they're also sp uh, they're also uh, advertising the soundtrack, which I probably won't buy, but that's okay uh, because I'm not much into vinyl because I think vinyl's too expensive. I think CD works better anyway. But that's freaking unbelievably cool, and I only got that for like 1711. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's uh, that's uh, that's that for this segment. Let's get back to past Matt and see what he's up to. He's probably gonna talk about some stupid shit. Who knows? And uh. Peace. Next up is Kaze and the Wild Masks. That's the word. This is a platformer in the style of Crash Bandicoot, but 2D. It also kind of reminds me of Jazz the Jackrabbit. You know, they're both rabbits and they both play kind of like Sonic. Which leads me to my next comparison. Sonic. Yeah, this uh, this has a little bit of damage here. I don't know. I don't exactly remember where that came from, but it's there. I don't know. But yeah, it's got some damage. I haven't gotten very far in this game. <laughs> Starting to notice a trend now, aren't you? It's a solid platformer. It's probably one of my favorite on the Switch. Considering I don't really own very many 2D platformers, that's not really saying much though, truth be told. Well, I own another one, but I would say this one is better. I mean, I know that's... Once you figure out what it is, it might be controversial, I know. The pixel art is very beautiful. It's very detailed, not so detailed that it takes freaking forever to make, but detailed enough where I'm impressed. Uh, I like the fact that you can go back and collect things to completion in a uh, retry friendly way. And I also like the fact that I can correct people and say it's called Kaze, not K's. You know, uh, maybe I'm wrong though, maybe it is K's, maybe I look like a fool. I'm not gonna put a graphic on screen, by the way. You're just gonna have to look it up for yourself. And also because I'm lazy. Speaking of lazy, it's our good old Pink Puff Ball Kirby. I have not played enough of this game. It's a shame. I really should play more of the game considering I freaking pre-ordered it. You know, it's a great game, but why have I not played it more? And also I didn't dodge once, even though I know it's a core mechanic of the game. It's crazy, I know, right? Uh, but yeah, um, I'm surprised at how good this is. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be considering, you know, it's basically just Kirby, but in 3D. But even despite the limited amount of uh, copy abilities, the length, and the difficulty and all that stuff. I mean, truth be told, it's freaking great. Now keep in mind, this is the Kirby Defender who says every game is at the very least good, but I'm gonna modify it and say every game is the very least mediocre because I've played some games from the Kirby series that aren't exactly the best. I mean, Squeak Squad rings a bell, right? I mean, I know. But yeah, um, I don't really own very many Kirby games anymore. I sold most of mine on the Game Boy, on the DS, you know, on the 3DS. Actually, I didn't sell that one. I lost the one on 3DS, or more accurately, one of my younger brothers lost. 
lost uh, the one on 3DS. So I had no choice but to get rid of the case. Tragedy, I know. Uh, but yeah, this is my first real uh, return to Kirby when it comes to owning it and playing it. Uh, but I played a lot of games throughout the series. I liked Mass Attack quite a bit. I kind of regret selling that one. Next up is La Mulana 1 and 2. And this is the game in question where I was lied to. Some jackass in the comments of a play asia page said that it was in english when the actual release said that it wasn't in english yet i bought it and i bought it i bought it both figuratively and literally it came with the collector's edition let me show you what the collector's edition came with it's quite the package let me pull up my suru gaia graph because indeed i did buy it off of suru gaia and i paid the equivalent to uh how much did i pay exactly uh 38.94 which is actually really cheap although ideally i would have liked it to be in english the games themselves are pretty much like old pc style you know spunky but before spunky came out kind of like a thousand and one spice you ever played that game it's pretty freaking cool it's kind of like a castlevania game actually is a more apt comparison but let me show you what it came with i'm not gonna say the name of this company because i'm afraid it's gonna get me canceled see that right there i can't say that but yeah this is the little uh, instruction booklet which is unreadable to me in more ways than one because if you look over here it's freaking sheet music which i'm sure somebody could read but i can't because i don't know sheet music either it's not a language i don't understand and also came with ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba a uh, six cd soundtrack yes indeed quite the overkill there's a lot of tracks on here and i and i ripped them all and i've used them all legally on my phone because that's legal people as long as you don't share it you can use it however the hell you want keep your own personal library do it don't use any websites that are illegal unlike me i would never do that yes use them uh cds to your advantage i think actually the digital version of one of them is included because i don't think it's actually one and two packaged in physically i think one one of them actually is something you have to download from the eShop, which makes it even more disappointing. Like, what the frick, dude? They're both not even that big of a package. Why couldn't you just include them in a cartridge together? So this is the ultimate ripoff. Well, not really, though, because I, I love the soundtrack, so that was worth it, I think. I mean, on top of the game being good, so there's that. But there's certain mechanics that I don't exactly get because they're not in English, so, you know, that's kind of a nuisance. Yeah, I mean, I'm, if I'm being real, which I ain't nothing but real. Next up, I gotta be quiet because uh, my family's sleeping. So uh, I guess this is time for the asthma segment. Uh, first up is a uh, labyrinth of refrain cover of dusk. This is yet another long titled uh, NIS release. I'm going even quiet right now. Uh, yeah, uh, this NIS release is uh, a dungeon crawler. It does have the alternate cover, but no manual this time, so kind of disappointing. This one, I think, was a bit harder to come by, but it might be available now, I have no idea. You can name characters whatever you want, but the customizability for each character is pretty limited, and what you can uh, choose for them to be looks-wise and uh, attribute-wise. It's a pretty rudimentary dungeon layout and honestly i'm kind of stuck in the game right now and the story is blase so i think i'm going to leave it at that next up is the game that's seen its better days it's a game i played the crap out of it's a game i've also featured plenty of clips of on this channel which i'm sure you know will be in the end cards somewhere it's legend of zelda breath of the wild Breath of the Wild is like one of my favorite games on the Switch, period. I literally learned the speedrun techniques, or at least some of them, and I wish to learn more because I am that in love with this game. Uh, the story is probably the weakest part, but other than that, the game is freaking fantastic. I bought the DLC, I got all the amiibos, albeit through bootleg. Like, I, I collected the hell out of everything in this game. I spent hundreds of hours on this game. Uh, the copy itself, uh, I literally bought it when I first got my Switch. It's the first game I ever owned for Switch, and it's seen its uh, fair share of usage, as you can tell by the creases in the plastic. So indeed, it is very much a very near and dear game to my heart. To a lesser degree, I don't know if I've beaten this game. I've gotten very far in it, and I 
enjoy it just as much, uh, but not more than Breath of the Wild. It's not as long of a game to get through. It's The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Uh, this is the remaster, or I guess in this case, remake. I never played the Game Boy or Game Boy Color versions of the game. This was my first experience with the game, and I gotta say, it's certainly quite different from a lot of the other Zeldas that have existed before and since, but I like it because of it, and I think it's a pretty solid experience. I didn't really have a lot of the same performance issues that everyone was talking about. I thought it ran great. I really enjoyed the graphics. I really enjoyed uh, the gameplay. The story is adorable, honestly. I might just play it again once I beat it, because it's that freaking good. Uh, it's time for the Switch video that I've been longing to do. So let's uh, get started without further ado. We have 62 games to get through. Let's do it now. Number one, and this is in alphabetical order, by the way. I actually do have my Switch collection alphabetized pretty well, so I'll be periodically taking them off the shelves, pausing in between. So far I have two right now, let's get with the first one, that being a magical high school girl. Now, I will only talk about this briefly, and the reason why I'll talk about this briefly is because I did already make a video on my channel playing through the game. And I did get my thoughts on the game as I was playing it. It was a pretty funny video. I'll, I'll put the link up in the card somewhere, maybe right here or here. Who knows? Anyway, um, the game itself is pretty good. I'll ignore that part. Let me talk about the experience that it took to get this game. The actual game itself, getting that game, I ordered it from Strictly Limited. Strictly Limited is a limited run equivalent, uh, except for they operate out of Germany. And they typically do more imports and retro physicals, as well as like a few digital exclusives. And they do, you know, uh, PS4 and uh, Switch and that's about it. And they also do retro stuff for the SNES, NES, you know, and TurboGrafx-16, all this other stuff. Dreamcast maybe, who knows. Anyway, uh... A Magical High School Girl was ordered and it shipped at one point, but it was lost along the way. I'm assuming it got stolen and basically I kept messaging them being like, hey, can I get a refund or can I get a new copy? Can I get a refund? Can I get a new copy? I contacted my post office. They're like, we can't, we can't find it. We don't know where it is. So eventually the lady's just like, well, how about you just file it with PayPal and get a refund that way? And so I did. I ended up filing a, a, a complaint with PayPal and eventually they just didn't respond. And I got my refund. And now, now the weird part is eventually they did respond, but I don't know if they were aware that I'd already gotten a refund. They said, do you want a refund or do you want a new, a new copy of the game? And I'm like, well, they, they didn't respond for the longest time. So you know what? I'm going to ask for a new game. I'm going to get a free game essentially because I already used the money at that point to buy the Switch game. What game? I have no idea. So I just bought a new Switch game and then got an, another Switch game for free. That's what happened. They ended up sending this game in the mail. <laughs> I didn't pay anything for it. It's freaking sweet. But I'm not using them again because they were just so bad with customer service they were so bad like it was quite clear that like my game was lost and they took freaking forever doing anything about it it took like a, at least three months i want to say and i'm not even exaggerating it took freaking forever uh but anyway yeah the game comes with uh with a manual manual squad hype so yeah definitely uh definitely check it out uh if you're gonna check it out check it out digitally do not use strictly limited i repeat do not use strictly limited uh next up is a Japanese uh, Switch copy. Have we encountered this yet? I don't know. It's Manifold Garden. Uh, let me show you something interesting about this. Um, yeah, they put the Sierra ratings, which this one is A, uh, on the spine, which I thought was interesting. It's kind of an eyesore, though. I don't like it. Uh, another interesting thing about this case, before we get started talking about the game, it has a really interesting backing, but why does it say self-defense right here? What? What does that have to do with anything? That is so weird. Yeah, um, this game is actually another another game that was originally something that I could have bought from the same publisher who published uh, the uh, Etherborn game, the I Am 8-Bit People, and I could have gotten it, and I probably could have gotten it for cheaper, but uh, I decided to go with the Japanese copy. Why? I don't know. I just felt like uh, buying something more reliable. You know, it came from PlayAsia, as always. Not sponsored by PlayAsia, by the way. I just happen to like their website. The game game is a puzzler in the style of a mind-bending, you know, dimension-shifting puzzler. Kind of like 
Anti-Chamber, if you've ever played that game. Speaking of that, when's that coming to Switch? That needs to come to Switch. But yeah, it's kind of like that, except for it's got like more of a gravity, like going up walls, kind of a Sharian. Kind of like either one, also a Sharian. But this one's especially like MC Asher. Uh, I kind of got stuck in this game and I got frustrated and I stopped playing it. I was also very tired when I played it, but I'm sure eventually, let me get closer to the mic. I'm sure eventually it'll, I'll come back to it and I'll play some more of it and I'll enjoy it but uh yeah it's it's published by playism which i i tend to like playism releases it, it looks great on switch there's not a whole lot of actual difference between this release and the pc release it's a very minimalistic game graphics wise and on top of that there's the options are pretty nice you know there's some like cool little uh, accessibility features that i really like pretty nice in between filming these sessions, uh, I found out that I could up the resolution of uh, my webcam to 1280 by 960. Uh, 4x3. So I'm actually in 964x3 with a, a background right about here. Uh, so yeah, notice some more crispy uh, details that you didn't previously see. I know, right? Crazy? I mean, does that invalidate the whole video? I don't think so. I think we're just gonna keep on going with the flow. And next up is uh, Mega Man 11 in crispy detail. Ooh. Yes, Mega Man 11. This is one I got at a game store. Um, it's a Mega Man game. It's actually a good Mega Man game. You know, it's it's a modern style. Uh, you know, 3D, 2.5D to be more specific. Sort of a run and gun. You know what Mega Man is? Jump and shoot, right? That's the classic, classic format that it pretty much, you know, uh, revolutionized. So uh, yeah, I mean, what can I say about Mega Man that hasn't already been said? How, what can I say about saying the phrase, what can I say about blank that hasn't already been said? What can I say about that? What I will say about it is that uh, I'm a little babby. I tried playing in the harder difficulties and got my ass whooped. So I had to lower the difficulty like a baby. The word of advice, don't play unless you're a true gamer, which I am not. And uh, it looks great on Switch. There's only a few games I would say that I own that don't look good on Switch. I mean, typically I don't buy things that run and look like doo-doo on Switch. And it's not annoying, like some of the previous Mega Man games would go like, boop, Mega Man! Classic eager after meme, before it became a po 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 pussy Yeah, I'm, I'm calling out eager after. <laughs> Where was I going with this? It's Metal Max Xeno Reborn, which Metal Max Returns is actually a game on uh, the Super Nintendo that came out in Japan. I believe there was uh, Metal Max on Famicom, I think. I could be wrong. I'll put it up on screen if I'm right or wrong. This is actually a series, and this is a game that the reason why I bought it because it reminded me of a PS2 game, of like a classic PS2 GameCube style game, like a Japanese AA kind of production. And I think it's really nice. It's an RPG with a tank. It makes it quite unique. I actually learned about it from Metal Jesus Rocks, which normally I don't really like watching his videos anymore because he doesn't know shit about games and he sucks at them. But uh, he exposed me to it, and uh, and I like his friend Reggie, even though Reggie's Reggie's videos are actually dog shit. But I like his gaming opinions more. He usually tends to be more right than freaking Metal Jesus. It, it kind of reminds me of Septera Core. You ever played that? Anyone ever played that? Reminds me visually of that. That's a very specific reference, but if you if you've seen the game, you'll agree with me. Published by PQ Games, PQ Games. And uh, developed, I think, by Katakawa Games. Okay, sounds fair. Oh shit, I just realized. Look, if you look right here, there's a little, uh, actually, you, you can't see it because of the, the crappy camera, but there's like a little flap that's sticking up here due to the way it's been stored. Which I think it came like that. Because I ordered it from GameStop and it was supposedly new, but it clearly wasn't new because it was unsealed. It was just new, you know, we've never sold it before, essentially. Which is like new, but GameStop doesn't give discounts for that because fuck them, they suck. But I ordered from them anyway, so what do I know, right? Next up is Metal Unit by a company called Neo Wiz. If you look at it very closely, it looks like a butthole. Like a, like a dog's butthole. Just puckered and ready to poop. <laughs> That's disgusting. Okay, um, yeah, it's it's by Super Rare again, and uh, this one I also 
don't have any problems with at all. Yeah, it certainly is a uh, a game, all right. I don't know how to describe the genre. It's kind of like a Metroidvania, but it's got more emphasis on combat. It's, it's linear. It's stage based. It's sort of a mech 2D platformer. I mean, kind of similar to some other games I've played. Can't exactly name them but you can buy it on Steam. With most Switch releases, you can buy it on Steam. Unless they got Nintendo as the publisher or or contain Nintendo properties. So uh, yeah, uh, Super Rare did a good job on this one. I mean, like I said before, they ship things out relatively quickly. Uh, and uh, I didn't play much of it. I'm not exactly the most into it, but I feel like eventually it's gonna be one of those games where I just pop it in one day and be like, I wanna play like a, like two or three levels of this. And then I, like in like 10 years, I beat the game or something. I have no idea. Or maybe I sell it by then. I bought it cause Cute Girl was on the cover. You can see the uh, Cute Girl right here. How could I have forgotten about Manual Squad? Look, there's a manual here with girls and a full dude right here. How could I have forgotten that? Uh, next up is Mighty Goose. Mighty Goose is a uh, freaking limited run game again. I know, crappy limited run. I'm ordering from them yet again, but I've already pled my case. There's also Playism, and uh, this is Blast Mode and MP2. Playism is definitely a publisher. Blast Mode and MP2 must be developers, I guess. This is a game, it's like Contra, or like uh, Metal Slug. Actually, it's more like Contra. It's, straight up, it's not really like Metal Slug, it's just straight up like Contra. With a, with a goose with with uh, robo arms and uh, it's your typical running gun affair. It's uh, graphically, it's, it's like every single game of this style, you know, whether it be Bomb Chicken or Iconoclasts or what what have you? It, it's in the same style as that, and uh, it's uh, it's a funny goose game. Goose go Rah! and that's funny, you know. But this actually does have a beefy manual, like a legit manual, the one that comes inside the game, and uh, yeah. So that's pretty cool, you know. I'm pretty happy about that. Never gonna read it. It's RPG time. It's Neo. The world ends with you. That's what it's called. And uh, I didn't play the first game and I don't own a DS. Well, actually, I do own a 3DS. But yeah, it's pretty much the only acceptable way to play is if you own a DS. I own a DS Lite, but copies are not worth paying for, even if they're expensive or not, it doesn't matter. I guess I could emulate it, you know, but that would be illegal, which is why I don't do it. But I, in general, I just, I'm just interested in playing the sequel as a stand standalone story. Uh, and as a standalone story, it's cool. Uh, I'm not exactly paying the best attention to it right now. I'm trying my best, but ADHD does its wonders on me and makes me skip all the cutscenes. Yeah, in general, it's f it's uh, it's engaging. The music is very repetitive and kind of earwormy, but also annoying at the same time, if that makes any sense. But it's sort of meme-worthy almost, how uh, sort of weird and off-tune it is. Uh, yeah, um, and it's really compressed too, which I think is really weird given, you know, it's like a AAA game published by Square Enix. But Square Enix publishing things in general don't really seem to make very much sense, do they? Like, the kind of things they've done as of recent, I mean. So, uh, yeah, um, Tetsu Nomura, uh, kept his grubby hands off the story, so it actually doesn't suck, and, uh, he took a minimal, like, a producing slash design role, which is what he should have done to begin with for Kingdom Hearts, but need I say more regarding that? It's me, what? I guess the world. Next up in this adventure that we're going on is Near Automata, the end of Yorha edition. And uh, this is a fantastic port by Platinum. I don't necessarily know if Platinum developed this port, but if they did, they did a freaking wonderful job and uh and of course it comes with uh, your typical bullshit inside but it comes with an alternate cover look at that isn't that cool yeah i mean it's pretty freaking amazing it's just like you know it's your typical platinum affair but it's also got that spin of being uh, a dragon guard style game where it's got all those wacky wild turns and twists and whatnot you know obviously it's a sequel to the original game near and the near replicant you know that came out in america localized for the first time recently i don't like the deal DLC though. I don't like the fact that they've uh, shoehorned in a bunch of DLC like microtransaction bullshit about the game. That's not my biggest uh, biggest thing that I'm into. But it's it's what you have to expect with modern gaming, you know. Music as always uh, with sort of uh, near and uh, Dragon Guard games is fantastic. It's what you expect, you know, from the the, the mastermind behind it all. I forget his name. I'll put it up uh, right 
here. Oh yeah, I got a GameStop, and it's another one where it was supposedly new, but it was on the shelf, and it was it was a copy that was open for people to touch and put their grubby hands on. So it wasn't exactly new, it's just never been played, I guess, what they actually mean. It's my favorite game series time! I would have said that before the disaster that was known as 3 happened. I probably would have said it even after Travis Strikes Again came out. Yeah, that's right, we're talking about the OG. No more heroes, it's kill or be killed. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I went in the reverse order of what I should have. I beat the second game and then, I, and then I'm playing through the first game. Still haven't beaten it, I know, criminal, right? Uh, this game, I thought I would go into it not liking it as much as I, as I would, which I know sounds crazy because I love, love, love the story of this game, but uh, I thought the gameplay would have not been able to match it, but I, I think it's all right. I think the gameplay is pretty good. Graphically, it looks better than the freaking the supposed third game of the trilogy. Like, really? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I just bought No More Heroes 3 and then I just chucked it the moment I got bored of it. I just sold it. Bye-bye. Don't need you. Enough about No More Heroes 3. No More Heroes the original by Limited Run. Hopefully, I think... I think this, this will be the last limited run release, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think we'll have to deal with their greedy asses anymore. Until the last one of my shipment arrives, or whatever. Actually, there is one more, but it's it's the sequel to the series. I'll, I'll say it right now. It's No More Heroes 2. I'm just going to spoil it. Let me show you the beefy, beefy manual right here. Uh, this is actually the Best Buy alternative cover, because I just happened to see it at Best Buy and I bought it. Which is realistically what I should have done for some of the, some of the games I bought in limited run. I should have just wait for them to go on Amazon or whatever. Look, it's the game that's within the game. Look at that. But yeah, inside is a map of Santa Destroy, which I think looks like the Indianapolis flag, which is interesting. I mean, yeah, I love the music by Masafumi Takeda. I use his stuff all the time in videos. You might not even notice. But on top of that, I I love. I love listening to it casually. Uh, the gameplay is pretty good. I mean, if you played one, you played them all except for Travis Strikes Game. We don't talk about that. Paradise. This is no paradise. I'm just going to geek out about it, I guess, because I am a No More Heroes fan until they fucking ruined it. I mean, come on. Why is freaking Sylvia not French sounding and why is Henry Sir Henry mother fucker not Irish and why is he like an incel fucking like I don't even know what the he's like some fucking zodiac motherfucker in the trilogy or in the third game and then the fucking big booby sword like sword ladies a tree and ah oh, she gives me a fucking migraine every time I think about it mm, I fucking hate number no those three so bad gotta move on because clearly <laughs> I'm pissed off about something else uh, this this next one, yes, it is indeed No More Heroes 2. I think this one gets overhated. I don't think it's that bad. I like the fact that they streamlined it to the point where you just go to the mini games, you don't have to deal with the overworld because honestly, the overworld is usually the worst part of the No More Heroes series. Uh, it's charming the first game, but I I would have hated to do it in the second game. Uh, the bosses are way better. The gameplay is tighter. Uh, I like um. I like the designs of a lot of the bosses. I I, I don't think Jasper Bat Jr. is that even that, even that bad as a boss. I get he's an annoying little twat of a character that sucks, but at the same time, uh, yeah, uh, it's not that bad fight-wise. If I played on mild, maybe it would have been harder. Maybe would have hated it. God forbid if I played on spicy. All I know is uh, I like this game. I like the the mini game where you make Gene not fat. I don't know why the fuck Gene is a guy in, in this trilogy. I don't get why the why the fuck does he talk? Why the fuck are there aliens? So many stupid fucking questions I I, I have to ask. Why why are they doing the whole like like plot twist thing a million fucking times in the game? It, it was it was a joke. It was a meta joke in this game. It's just a fucking farce in the third game. I mean like the character models look ugly. Ugly. It looks like it looks like uh, like a budget version of Killer is Dead, and I like that game, but I don't want it on Switch, and I don't want it at a budget price, at least in terms of looks. Even speaking of that, that's a Suda 51 sound effect. Anyway, sound effect from Killer 7. I'd rather it look like Killer 7 than Killer is Dead, budget wise. This sucks. This game's awesome. Fuck No More Heroes 3. I'm done. Weep, weep, weep. Weirdo shit. Creepy sex shit coming up. It's Omega Labyrinth Life. Now, I literally bought this game not knowing it was a creepy sex game. I'm being serious. I'm being dead serious. I just saw it was a mystery dungeon game and I wanted to play it. I thought it was Toho. I literally thought it was Toho. This is a creepy sort of like mess with the women's breasticles and then 
go on an adventure in a roguelike RPG sort of mystery dungeon game. And then build a garden and whatnot. Don't forget about the creepy sex shit! They literally got the cast on the back of all the actresses just so you can look them up and stalk them. Ew. Makes me, makes me squirm, dude. Makes me literally squirm. But that's the game. That's the game in question. It is a uh, freaking um, D3 published game so you know what you're looking at, you know, considering that's pretty much all they do. Besides the Simple series, all they do nowadays is just release creepy sex shit. So I should have expected it, but... Gameplay is alright, you know, I actually like the gameplay quite a bit, but I'm gonna sink kind of lower into my chair now. Sorry guys, I'll see you later. Hello, it's me, Guru Larry, and I welcome you to Fact Hunt. Five times I sucked my own dick in the park. Number 12, it was a really good time. Number 11, I'm on to the next part of the video, which is the Japanese hour. Yes, it's Weave Hour, everybody. But we have two different Japanese games in a row. And first up by Tokyo Game Factory, published again by Square Enix. It's Oninaki. Yes, it's a physical from Japan. Man, have we encountered that? Yes, we have. Have we encountered it with uh, Japanese language on the on the side? No, we have not. Yes, Oninaki is a action RPG from Tokyo Game Factory, the people who made Bravely uh, Default and Bravely Second. Um, this physical was uh, was released in America, but is very rare and is way cheaper to get the Japanese version, which also comes in English anyway. Yes, some Japanese games actually do come in English, including that last game, Manifold Garden, that I was talking about. That also came in English. Yes, and I bought this uh, on eBay. Yes, on eBay, not uh, from PlayAsia. I know I keep mentioning them but uh, yes this one was an ebay purchase from a very nice seller from japan will give me a very reasonable price shipped it relatively quick and i have great things to say about him regardless of the price whatever it was he was great anyway he was like one of the few guys who actually tried to respond to me and in english too which was a very valiant effort by him considering the language barrier yeah this game itself is actually not that special i mean story-wise i've heard it's not very good not very interested in the story anyway uh action rpg wise is an interesting concept where you jump between worlds sort of like an angel demon thing uh it's not a unique concept but it's certainly one i haven't seen done in this exact way um I i'm i'm actually curious to play bravely default too i kind of want to i i i I own a 3DS, but it's in battered shape. Otherwise, I'd play Bravely Default and Bravely Second. But yeah, um, this game is actually not that bad. This is not, not that good either. I mean, honestly, if I were ever to sell any games, I might sell this one. But I don't feel like it because right now it's it's uh, it's in my collection and it's staying that way. Let me show you not a manual. Uh, there's there's a code. Can't use it. Doesn't work. It expired. But here's the nice little alternate cover on the back that I think is really interesting. Speaking of games of which that I might sell at some point in time due to in this case actually beating it and getting all the endings and whatnot it's uh oshirabu husbandos versus wife whatever the title is i'll put it on screen this is a is something i pre-ordered from guess what it came back play asia i waited months for this to come out when it did i played it i beat it i enjoyed it it's a yuri yes it's actually one of two yuris i have in my collection but yes it's a uh, it's a visual novel where where you have choices to decide whether or not to get with a woman who uh, mistakenly thinks you've proposed to her when in reality she was proposing to her husband -o. and i will keep the details sparse because i want you to play and enjoy it by yourself the accessibility options and in general just the options on this version is are fantastic it certainly is premium in that sense um i ordered it from playasia which didn't have a pre-order bonus but believe it or not ha had i ordered it from like amazon or like I, I looked up the website and like they actually came with like posters and like and like uh like wall scrolls and all, all, these, all these various things like postcards and whatnot like for the Japanese pre-order release but I guess PlayAsia didn't bother including any of those which kind of sucks but again I don't live in Japan so what am I supposed to do about that so I guess that's uh Japanese hour over weave hour is over close up shop move on to the next part of the video wah, wah. just so you know if I sound a bit different uh I don't have the Rona I just have a general head cold so I might cough I'll try to edit it out but probably by the time this gets done I'll, I'll be better and I'll be still recording so next up is Owlboy the interesting thing about all boys i bought it three times two i think i bought intentionally and one i bought on accident one 
I was trying to order for me when I was trying to order for my older brother and then I for some reason eBay cut off communication between me and a seller and we were trying to tell each other because I accidentally shipped it to the wrong address because my, my older brother moved houses I was trying to ship it to his new apartment eventually you know he got, he got the message but I was trying to get a refund because he wasn't responding to me but then it was a whole big mess basically I got that worked out but during the meantime I ordered another copy so I ended up giving it to my brother Will he hasn't played it much at all that rotten bastard him just kidding I love him yeah Owlboy is a really detailed game but it's not exactly the most polished in my opinion I think one of the major problems with the game is the fact that uh that there's like certainly corners that were cut despite the fact it took like 12 years to make or something crazy like that I, I think something like uh, Iconoclast is actually more uh polished than something like Owlboy Iconoclast took a similar amount of time but I feel like there's a definitely there I feel like there's definitely a bigger level of polish even if the detail isn't as detailed you know if that makes any sense uh the game uh is fun it's certainly simple simplistic uh i mean it's definitely more focused on like the 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 sight and the the ability to be behold it as opposed to actually play it it's definitely reminiscent of something like a jrpg like you know like a tales of game or like a, or like a cold steel legends of whatever the hell or like an ease game when it comes to scope i guess it certainly got that jrpg vibe despite maybe the uh gameplay and origin of it kind of like a psp game if you will it's the kind of vibes it gives me uh yeah but you can find it for on switch for super cheap so actually i would like this is one of the few times that i would actually recommend you uh pick up the switch physical over any other version because you you'll probably get it for cheapest on switch through physical because i certainly did as opposed to buying it on steam like on sale or or buying it on uh like the eShop on sale or whatever i mean like i, I yeah it, it doesn't really go on sale that often so i would say pick it up on switch physical it's actually worth your while pac-man 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 it's pac-man everybody it's pac-man world repack what is up guys it's pac-man time it's time to get packed in your back baby yes indeed yeah it's it's actually a really good remake um i never played the original i never played the sequel and never played the third game but i'm always a fan of the pac-man i like pac-man i like miss pac-man which is owned by at games fuck you at games I like pack attack i like pac-mania i like pac-man 2 the one with where he's an asshole I like the pac-man platformer pac-land i like all sorts of Pac-Man games. I like Pac-Man, the Battle Royale. That one was cool. What well, lasted? Yeah, um, this game pretty faithful, based on what I've heard. Pretty faithful to the original. I have gotten past the first level, and that's about it. So Pac-Man, you never see it coming. Yes, it's Persona 5 Royal. I mentioned earlier it would never come out. I I was I was wrong. It came out on PC and it came out on Switch, and I freaking bought it, baby. Let's go! Oh yeah! Now I get to play the first game and and, ha and know exactly what happens because I played Persona 5 Strikers, but I don't care. It's freaking wonderful. I love Persona 5. It's freaking great, man. Uh, Joker's my dude. Joker's my dude, man. Dude, man, boy. He's freaking wonderful. And I I, and I'm having so much fun playing this game. I can't wait to play more of it and play more Persona 5 Strikers, baby. Sega has done a wonderful job bringing this over to Switch or forcing Atlas to bring this over to Switch. Because you know Atlas wouldn't do it on their own. It's certainly Royale. Now, can we get a physical of Persona 4, please? Thank you. Oh yeah, the music. The music. Mwah, chef's kiss. Beautiful characters oh man there's so many to choose from one of them will be my waifu so don't you don't you worry your pretty little head too many waifu will ruin life for you it will it's probably the blonde one let's be real even though the cat is obsessed with her he can fuck off how about that change the world my final message goodbye <laughs> As you can tell, I'm much more sick now, uh, as opposed to when I first started uh, recording while sick. I probably won't be recording as much due to all the phlegm and bad stuff in my throat, but uh, I thought I'd just get this one out of the way, considering it's sitting on my desk, 
and uh, I, I, I was meant to record that next, but I never got around to it. Well, my voice sounded better. But right now, it's Persona 5 Strikers. I would own Persona 5 on Switch if it existed, which I think eventually it will, but it, ha it hasn't existed yet. When it will, and when it comes physically, I will absolutely buy it. But for now, I, I'm content with Strikers. I get by playing Strikers, and I'm spoiling the plot to the regular Persona 5. I don't exactly care, simply because because, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I don't really care about plots being spoiled in general. I can usually go back and watch plots. I already know the ending to be just fine as long as I'm not like watching a whole Let's Play or whatever, which I didn't. I just played a sequel series. So, uh, or in this case, a sequel game. It is a Muso, but also kind of like stealth and uh, more RPG focused than a lot of Musos are. It's certainly an Atlas game, you can tell. Uh, I like the fact that you can play with the Japanese voices. That's pretty cool. The story is great, but yeah, it's nice to play with the original uh, dub and not the new dub in English. I, I, I don't mind the dubs, I just prefer to uh, listen in Japanese. And Look at the subtitles. The story is great. I can't wait to play the original Persona 5. I just don't want anything that plays it. Maybe I'll buy it on PC. I don't know if that if that ever comes to fruition. I mean, you never know with Atlas. If they say they'll do something, but who knows if they actually do it. I heard Persona 4 is a bit different when it comes to like sort of gameplay elements. And 5 is a lot more streamlined, but not as romance focused, which I'm okay with. It's certainly something that can hold my attention for long periods of time. A game I'm not good at though, that's for sure. All right, there's one thing I forgot about Persona 5 Strikers. It comes with a code for uh, the DLC, which is like the soundtrack and the making of and all that. But I wish it just would have come came included with the cartridge as like a separate file, like on 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 the actual thing itself. But instead, they lock you to a code so that like if you buy a used copy, you're not able to get it. So I think it's pretty scummy. And don't worry about using the code; it's already already been used. Hey guys, what's up? I'm back after a hell of a day where I had a massive fever and uh, I could barely move. And uh, I'm feeling better now. I'm feeling good enough where I can record. Last time I saw you, we were on the P's and uh, I believe we just got through Persona Strikers. So now, up next, is actually the most recent addition to the collection. It's Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Uh, yeah, um, funny thing is, uh, I played this, I kept playing it, but the time limit kind of stresses me out, honestly, like, I was getting so stressed out trying to do everything within the time limit, it makes me so nervous, it makes me want to, like, freaking have a panic attack playing that game, it's like, I don't know if I can go back to it, you know, I, I like it, I like it, I like, I like it graphically, I like it, uh, you know, art-wise and design-wise, and I like the gameplay, but I don't know if I can go back, you know? Um, it's kind of interesting because, you know, I never played a Pikmin game, and I know this one's more forgiving than others, but, I mean, it's just not for me. I'm not gonna sell it, I'm not gonna get rid of it, because maybe I'll grow as a person enough to not get so stressed out playing it. That's ideally the goal. So, uh, I haven't played it very long because of that. So, I don't have much to say about it, so we can just blow right through that one and move on to the real star of this recording session. It's Poison Control. This one does indeed have a manual manual squad hype this comes with a manual and it comes with a code for a soundtrack which i cannot show otherwise you'd be able to use it unlike the last code i showed which you can't use uh poison control kind of reeks of a vita game i don't know if it ever came out on vita i'll put it on screen if it ever did it feels like a vita game it feels like if it wasn't originally meant for vita that uh they definitely tried to put it on Vita before switching to Switch. Yeah, it's, it's another NIS release. Uh, it's sort of like a Splatoon-like game, but with emphasis on like shooting and kind of like Killer's Dead. I know I brought that, brought that up earlier in my infamous, uh, it's not it's not infamous because this video isn't even out yet, but what will be an infamous uh, rant uh, about No More Heroes 3. Uh, but yeah, it reminds me of that game. I still think it looks better than No More Heroes 3 anyway, but I'm too sick to be upset about No More Heroes again, so I'm good. Um, but yeah, this game uh, has a forgettable story, not much of a story anyway. Uh, it's just like basic ass cuts scenes with like a few interactable dialogue with like some sort of choice system which I don't really, really know how it's going to be implemented. One thing I don't like is there actually is like one microtransaction in the game that I don't I think is bullshit. It works like a mobile game. It's like 
if, if you don't, if you lose lives or if you do whatever to not get farther in the, in, far enough in the game, you have to wait to, to play it again. Or you can just buy like some bullshit microtransaction and you can get back to playing it. It's like, well then why did you charge money for this game? Like why didn't you just go all out and make it free to play and just do the microtransaction bullshit so I could avoid it? Thankfully the game's not that hard, really. So I don't think I'll experience a problem, but it, that, that stuff definitely irks, irks me, for sure. Uh, I prefer not to be uh, paywalled at all. This is, uh, I believe this is an in-house NIS game. They developed and published this themselves. They didn't, you know, uh, outsource it to somebody else and publish it for Switch or whatever. Like with other games in the series. I believe this was supposed to be another GameStop exclusive, although I know for a fact it is not because that's not where I picked it up. I picked it up on, I believe, Amazon or Best Buy, one of the two. But yeah, it's definitely no longer a GameStop exclusive if it was supposed to be. Unlike the Hellmoot game, which still is a GameStop exclusive, you could buy this new, although probably not now, it's been a little bit and, and I had a bit of a harder time finding it. Maybe you'd still buy it? I have no idea. Would I say pick this up? Just depends. If you don't mind the fact that you might be paywalled at some point, and if the game looks interesting to you, I'd say pick it up. And finally, in this uh, brief uh, little freaking excursion, or brief for me, I guess, based on my recent uh, video uploading schedule, when it's not shit post, is uh, Diamond and Pearl, or uh, I guess I should say Brilliant Diamond, Pokemon uh, Brilliant Diamond, which I know in my uh, my Switch collection video, I did mention how the, all the other Pokemon games are trash. I was wrong. I admit my fault. I am wrong. This game's not that bad. It's not worth the money that, that they're charging for. I paid like 20 something dollars. I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, I don't pay any anymore because it's not worth that much and uh pokemon legends rc is actually pretty good i think it's actually worth the money i was completely wrong about that i know i'm i'm, I'm just as shocked as you are looks like doo-doo but it's good it's actually not it doesn't sound like that much like doo-doo it just looks like a really bad gamecube game which isn't that bad but yeah um speaking of this game it's pretty freaking nice um it's not the best pokemon game i'm waiting for the black and white remakes those are gonna be freaking amazing like i would say probably the best remake so far is still fire red and leaf green in my humble opinion i've not played heart gold and soul silver maybe they're better I mean, it's better than the alpha and mega alpha and ruby and mega sapphire i thought those ones were black i don't like those ones yeah um this is nice it's not nostalgic because i never played it i like the underground mechanic as do most people and uh it plays in english which i'm really happy about it was super cheap because it was japanese Came in a decent amount of time the seller was super nice i really like him uh and uh yeah not much more i can say about it so without further ado let's uh cue the freaking uh, music oh my god what the fuck just happened it's almost as if i changed the world and my final message was goodbye and what's this in my hand i happen to be holding the next game in the collection pokemon legends Arseface, I mean Arceus, I mean Arceus. Goofs and gaffs aside, yes, it's Pokemon Legends Arseface. Yes, uh, despite the goofs and gaffs, that is the actual name of this game. Anybody saying it's it's Arceus or Arceus is wrong, it's actually Arseface. Graphically, it's not as bad as people say it is, especially compared to Scarlet and Violet. Now, it is just basically a GameCube game, essentially, or a Wii game, but that's okay. You know, like I said in previous parts of this video, as long as graphics aren't terrible bad, I don't exactly care. And the graphics in this case are not terror bad as opposed to like sword and shield which are pretty bad but and performance is just fine I, I have no issues so they didn't fuck it up this time um yeah i like uh, the customization mechanic uh and oh yeah i forgot to mention this is again a suru gaia purchase and i purchased it for 33.35 uh which is pretty nice um it, it came like new not exactly new but it came pretty pristine and i think that's worth the money i paid for it there's going to be two more Surugaya um, purchases, so look out for those. I like the format of going around just like throwing balls and like getting to battles or just straight up catching things just by throwing them. I like I like the idea of um, having to go from like area to area and exploring, having free reign to go pretty much wherever you want. You know, obviously there's barriers with Pokemon that are too powerful. I like the fact that you can also skip things that you don't have to be stuck in a bullshit tutorial if you don't want to be, which is funny because it's still not ideal. There's still there's still the fact that there's some stupid tutorials to begin with but things like like ultra sun ultra moon were ridiculous so in comparison to that you know that's a cakewalk 
I don't like the fact that not all Pokemon are in the game, but I just have to accept that at this point because Pokemon Company have made it clear that they're not going to put every single Pokemon in, in a game ever again. And uh, as long as they put quality games like this out that are distinct enough from the original Pokemon games that are not like supposedly mainline entries like Scarlet and Violet that are bug laden and full of holes, I don't exactly care anymore. I've given up on that uh, battle. That's not a hill I'm willing to die on. Nintendo, I don't know if I would want them to own the majority stake. They're pretty much a plurality right now. I, I don't know if I'd want them to own the majority stakes just for the simple fact that, you know, I'm sure they'd fuck it up somehow even worse than Pokemon Company is doing it right now. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But hey, they just raised their employees' uh, pay despite uh, profits going down, so... Based. I'm back and I sound even better. I'm not sick as much as I was two days ago, for sure. I'm pretty much over whatever I have. It's just congestion now. So let's freaking go, baby. Speaking of let's freaking go, it's Pokemon Go. Not really, it's Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. Yes, I own a Pokemon game. Pokemon, I guess is how you say it. But I own a Pokemon game. Uh, this is the only one I will own on Switch because all the other Pokemon games, Pokemon games on Switch are fucking trash. Sword and Shield, trash. The Diamond and Pearl remakes. Diamond and Pearl weren't even that really good and the remake does barely anything, so trash. Pokemon Snap, not as good as the original. Need I say more? And don't even get me started on those digital games, because those are also doo-doo. This is the only one, I'll tell you why, because it was originally supposed to be a 3DS game. It is a remake of a game I played as a kid. It's a mystery dungeon game. I've owned games in this series before, like the original Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, but also something like Sheeta and the Wanderer. I didn't own Sheeta and the Wanderer, I, I pirated it. Oops, did I say that out loud? Yeah, I played that, and uh, I've also played, uh, there's another one I own for Switch. Not, sorry, not Switch, uh, PC. I'll put it up on screen, whatever it is. But yes, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. I also played one on WiiWare, by the way, but that's also pirating. If you notice, I fixed the mic so that the actual logo's on front now. I, I had it messed up before. Uh, enough procrastinating. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon plays just how I remembered it, but better. Uh, the graphics are nice, not amazing. You can tell it's supposed to be a 3DS game. Uh, it's also uh, a Russian release, like the previous one, although this one was not near the, not nowhere near the start of the Ukraine war, so I got lucky there, for sure. This game is freaking great. It has all the features of the original, plus the sort of like, you type in certain codes, you get certain Pokemon from even the WiiWare game that I mentioned earlier. It has a lot of the modern conveniences, it has a lot, a, a way better AI, because if you've ever played the original games on DS and GBA, the AI was terrible. It was so bad, it was actually annoying having to deal with other other, other uh, NPCs or other players that went along with you because they sucked so bad. They would, they would constantly get into fights and they would constantly be like making trouble where it didn't belong. It was like, God, can you just you just freaking follow me. But this is not a problem in that in this game. Oh, the town is great, story is great, charm is great, music is great. Honestly, I, I could go on and on about this game, but I mean, come on, this video is already like an hour long at this point. I need to move on. And moving on, this is the deal I was talking about way long ago. I told you that I, I got a game for an insane deal. This is that game. It's a platformer. And I and I think I said at one point that I had like two platformers. It's not true because I already mentioned the platformer I had earlier. And I probably have some more, truth be told. But anyway, it's uh, freaking Rayman Legends. Yes, I got Rayman Legends at uh, Meyer, which is a Midwestern slash, you know, wherever uh, grocery store. It's not really known for being like a electronics store. It has a very small electronics section. They had a lot of games on clearance, and uh, this one was the cheapest. It was six dollars. Six dollars. Do you know how cheap that is, especially in modern currency? You can, you can't get anything for six dollars now. It's insane how cheap I got this for. Nobody wanted it, and it's not like there's any extra downloads there's like a what like a 10 megabyte download or something for a patch it's a full ass cartridge there's nothing wrong with it i got it brand new and it plays great it's it's rayman legends like what do you expect it comes with the original rayman origins it's uh it's a great platformer it's uh it's got the, it's got the kung Fu mode that i probably will never play and honestly like I, I don't get why it was going for six bucks like who wasn't buying this this was like the best deal i probably ever gotten on a switch game for sure either that or like 
probably something like Sushi Strikers Wear the Sushi Do, which I'll, I'll show later. I got that for like $12. Spoilers. Uh, Rayman, I haven't played much of it because it's actually a recent addition to the collection. A few games have a recent addition, hence why I haven't, ha haven't had much to say about them. But I, me I remember buying Rayman Origins on Steam years ago. I loved it. I played it. Didn't beat it. I haven't beaten this game. Uh, I tend not to beat platformers. I'm kind of bad about that. I tend not to beat games in general, truth be told. There's only a handful of games I've ever beaten. So let's move on swiftly. Let's talk about the final game in this brief uh, collection in this brief recording. Rolling Gunner uh, and Overpower. Is that what it's called? Plus Overpower. Uh, this actually comes with uh, both uh, the game and the DLC included in the cartridge. Although I don't know if it's included because it didn't come with a sizable download. This is by Strictly Limited. Yes. Uh, as you know before, I'm not using them ever again. This is the second game I got from them out of the t out of the first one, which was the first, video uh, first game I showed in this video. Yes, now we're finally to the second game I bought from Strictly limited this one came in no problem this was actually the one that came in first despite i think i, I ordered it second uh, this game is a shoot em up you can play either with the analog stick and play like in, in a sort of like twin stick shooter way or a classic arcade way where you can play with like a stick or whatever and uh it's it's a just a two 2D horizontal shooter uh, that just uh, plays like your typical shooter. I probably paid too much for this, truth be told. But the point is, yeah, um, overall, this is a great game, but uh, honestly not dissatisfied with it. Uh, does it come with a manual? Yes, indeed it does. Manual squad hype. Although this is not exactly a manual, it's more like a poster. I'm not going to take it out because then I have to fold it back in. But yeah, that's basically what you get. Back to alphabetical status, it's Rune Factory 4 Special. Uh, this is a Rune Factory game, uh, originally on 3DS. I have barely played it. I feel like an asshole. I barely played this game. I specifically went to a GameStop in the boonies to pick this up, and I barely played it. Uh, it is a marvelous uh, release. Uh, yes, a marvelous. They say that uh, in the beginning of the No More Heroes entries, which were also marvelous publications. And this is yet another one, but this one's actually developed by Marvelous. Yes, I'm going to keep saying it like that because you can't stop me. Yes, indeed, it's it's a manual squad back again. Frick, I gotta fix that. Now it's fixed. It's got a beautiful background. It's got a, a beefy manual, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a Harvest Moon game, but fantasy. With, with fighting and whatnot. I'm waiting for them to do uh, Tides of Destiny. I think I, I think that entry would be really cool to put on Switch. Instead, we have Rune Factory 4 to deal with. And uh, yeah, I need to play more of it. Otherwise, I can't really tell you what it's about. Next up is Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. This one I have played a decent amount. It's a sort of a uh, rice farming simulator slash action RPG. Typical sort of like quirky, marvelous, exceed whatever the frick game. Uh, the dub for this game is terrible. I strictly play with the sub. I didn't know that when I was going to play the game that the character, the main character of the story is a freaking brat and is awful. But who knows why they did that, but I don't give a crap about story. Never have, never will. Uh, I mean, but I guess that's not true. I do care about some stories. I've been trying my best to care about stories as of recent, but this is not one of them. The story in this game sucks. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to learn my way around uh, rice farming while also playing the action RPG kind of section of the game. Side scrolling, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, 2D. 2.5D, 2.5D is the word I'm looking for. It is a graphically all right game. It doesn't look like trash, but it doesn't look good either. I imagine it looks good on other platforms. But yeah, um, this game is a uh, noise. And finally, for this segment of the video, it is Seabed. This is our first entry by East Asia Soft. This is, again, a uh, a company, another company I should say, that does limited releases, except for these are not re limited releases. Only the limited editions are actually limited releases. These are, but these are numbered releases that come from East Asia Saw. This is another Yuri, although this is sort of a depressing sort of mystery style Yuri. Don't know how else to describe it because I don't want to spoil much about it. I really don't know the whole scope of the game. As you can see, if, it, if it'll zoom in, it's number 12. This is like Paleontology Soft. I don't know what the hell that means, but this is what it's by. Uh, let me show you the manual. I won't show you the, what's inside, because if I do, it'll spoil things. But yes, indeed, this is the uh, inside. It has a little Nintendo Switch outline, like not really 
akin to anything else I've seen manual wise but it's interesting it's more of an art book really than an actual manual it's a visual novel you don't really need much manualing anyway but yes uh, it's kind of depressing honestly it's kind of a depressing mystery sort of game and uh, certainly uh, the complete opposite of the other Yuri game that I own and uh, I'll be right back because I got one more to show you. It's going to be brief. I'm going to make it really quick because I want to get this the hell out of the way. Yes, I own this game. Yes, it is inappropriate. Yes, it is sort of like basically softcore panel. Do I care? No, but I had to point it out. Uh, do you want to see the manual? That's the manual. That's the inside. Not talking about it any further than that. Bye bye. Okay, next up is uh, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne. HD remaster a bit of a mouthful I know this was originally a ps2 game being uh, ported to modern consoles such as the switch but also other consoles as well Shin Megami Tensei 3 is the third game well technically not the third there's also if uh, but it goes Shin Megami Tensei 1 Shin Megami Tensei 2 Shin Megami Tensei if uh, yes, and, the, and those games are not exactly localized in America. It's very annoying. Literally, the only ever localized version of Shin Megami Tensei 1 is through an iOS port that was a GBA translation ported over to uh, iOS, but that is now defunct. That no longer exists, so there's no official way to play an officially translated version of the first game. In the second game, you're better off just uh, playing a fan translation. Speaking of that, they recently fan translated the PS1 version version of Shin Megami Tensei, the original. They still haven't translated the TurboGrafx CD or the Sega CD version, but who knows what will happen there. Going back to Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, they didn't include the Dante DLC or the uh, bonus stuff from, from Maniac's edition, which I think is kind of BS. Uh, instead, you just get the, uh, the uh, crossover character from the other version from Japan. I forget the name of the character. I'll put it up on screen, whatever. Uh, yeah, Shin Megami Tensei 3 is an RPG. Which is funny because typically I don't like RPGs, but I like this RPG. Story wise, it is freaky deaky for sure. It is not exactly your typical story when it comes to RPGs, but it is your typical Shin Megami Tensei story, that's for sure. And uh, again, it's it's a very weird game. Weird things happen, spooky things happen, and it resembles sort of sort of a Pokemon Pokemon style of game, except for Shin Megami Tensei came first. It comes to monster capturing and using them in a uh, battle which by the way persona strikers also uses the uh monster capturing ability should have mentioned that in that part of the review but uh yeah um shin megami tensei 3 is hard as balls even on the lower difficulties it's not exactly the easiest i i i, I want most of the dlc except for the ones that makes the game easier because i'm not a pu -pu 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 pussy that's for damn sure i would say shin megami tensei 3 is a game for for those who enjoy atlas rpgs we're on the home stretch people let's get through this okay next up is shin megami tensei 5 also by atlas i don't know if you've noticed this but a lot of these games have either been published by square enix or atlas and in turn published by by Sega. As you know, I am a big RPG guy now, and this is no exception. I love the Shin Megami Tensei franchise. I wish I could play 1, 2, if, as well as uh, 4. I wish I could play those on Switch, especially 1, 2, and if in English, considering they are on, on the Japanese Switch Online SNES service. So it'd be nice if I could actually play them, the originals. But instead, I'm stuck with 5. I know, I know every game is kind of uh, an anthological, but I would like to be able to play the entire series in order. And this is, this is actually a decent Shin Megami Tensei game. I can't tell you if it's the best because I really like to play 4, but I can't. 4 is also locked only to the 3DS and has not been ported, even though it has no right not to be. It should be. Uh, this is the standard edition, not the Steelbook edition. I, I really wanted the Steelbook edition, but I couldn't find it, so I settled on this. I like the character designs. I like the, the main character's character design more than I like 3's. I think 3's is kind of generic. I like the opening of the game, and uh, I think it's kind of cool that you're not exactly a slave or like a or like a demon or you're not like you actually become like a god like a cool demigod guy as opposed to like a cursed demon or whatever like you actually kind of keep a lot of your humanity in this game which I really like. Although based on what it says, it says an elusive story filled with tragic choices so I'm assuming you can lose your humanity more and more. I, I always kind of find it doom and gloom every time the world ends in these games because Persona you save the world. This game it's like you pretty much just survive in the world as with all the other ones. I actually think it looks not too much better 
then Nocturne. Next up, I'm pulling out the big guns. Yes, I'm doing the last Mystery Dungeon game, as well as the second to last Subaru Gaia game. It's uh, Shiden the Wanderer, and uh, it's with some sort of subtitle I don't exactly know. I, I can tell you what it means in uh, Japanese, and I can tell you what it means in English. I'll put both on screen. It came in a collector's edition. Now, unfortunately, I wanted to keep the box, but of course, Surugaya put like a nasty sort of sticker over the box, so it basically gave me no choice but to throw it away. But uh, Shida and the Wanderer basically cost $31.89, which I think is a really good price for what this is. And I think it was not new. I'm pretty sure the, um, La Mulana was new. And I think also uh, Pac-Man was new, which I forgot to mention. And I think, the, I think the next game also came in new as well. Well, new-ish, I'll explain. But here is the game itself. This just has a plain old white cover on the inside, but to make up for it, they came with an art book slash, uh, well, it's just really an art book, actually. It's not really a manual at all. It just straight up is an art book with, with cool little art like this and uh, like this and like uh this and it's uh this game is uh, is uh published and developed by spike chunsoft this is actually the uh second spike chunsoft game that i own the first one being katana kami which is actually a, a, a uh, exclu an exclusive Japanese physical. This one is not. This one did get a crappy limited run release, but I decided not to buy that because this one comes in English anyway, so there's literally no point. And this is actually a remake of the original uh, Shida and the Wanderer, which is the second Mystery Dungeon sort of game uh, on SNES. Now it says 5 on it, like it says 5 plus. I mean, to me, it plays like not too dissimilar to the SNES game, which I have played legally on my legal Super Famicom with a legal, some sort of fucking I don't know ROM that I dumped from an actual cartridge onto an EverDrive LEGALLY! This is the last time I'm doing that joke I swear to god. I like this game in particular although I kind of wish they would have uh, ported as well the uh, the Wii game of Shira and the Wanderer. Uh, that one is actually uh, very cool and I think it, it deserves its own port. Next up is the last of the super rare uh, games in my collection. Yes, that's right. That's freaking uh, Smoke and Sacrifice from Curve Digital and Super Rare. I've already mentioned Super Rare, so I'll, I will leave that topic alone. Uh, this game is interesting because it is super cheap normally when you don't buy it physically. That's why it wasn't exactly selling that well, and, and I bought it anyway because I like the game, but I wouldn't recommend buying it physical. Let's just put that out, put that out there right now. It is a sort of... Um, don't starve clone mixed with uh, sort of a uh, weird kind of Dresden doll sort of aesthetic. You know, it has this sort of uh, cultish underworld kind of vibe. But uh, yeah, it, you, you definitely play uh, a game that is very similar to something like Don't Starve. Um, but yeah, the game is story-wise kind of interesting. Uh, the basic summary is that you're on like a tiny little patch of fertile land and then you have to sacrifice your firstborn, but then years go by, and in the underworld you find out that maybe your maybe your son is alive, maybe he isn't. You have no idea. As a mother, you go down and try to fight the uh, evils within the underworld, and you try to uh, you know reclaim your son and reclaim the land, sort of thing. There's a lot of smoke in the game, hence why it's called smoke and sacrifice. And sacrifice is obviously the son that you sacrificed. Manual squad hype. Yes, indeed. It's uh, Snipper Clips Plus. This is a release that is actually, the package itself is a physical exclusive. Otherwise, you have to buy the game and the DLC separately. It's something that if you press the plus button and try to find in the eShop, it says, this doesn't exist. I got this from Mercari. Uh, in general, I tend to avoid Mercari unless uh, there's a really good deal. Otherwise, I don't really use it very much because in in general, I don't like it as much as eBay, but uh, it, it's all right overall. Not amazing, but this is one of the games I got on Mercari. Uh, this is interesting because 
for a Nintendo release, it actually does have a, uh, a backing, which normally Nintendo games do not have very good backings. Uh, normally they have very boring or very basic backings. I thought, the thought, and I thought that was interesting. Yes, yeah, Neverclips is a game that is a puzzle game. Uh, one thing that irritates me about the game is that you can't record your uh, your puzzle playing sessions. I think it's kind of bullshit because, you know, I, I find a solution and I feel really clever, but I can't record it because the game's like, nope, you can't spoil the solution, which in my opinion is stupid. Rayman Legends also does that as well, which I know I, know I mentioned earlier, uh, the game Rayman Legends, but I forgot to mention that Rayman Legends also doesn't let you record gameplay, which I think is also bullshit. I think any game that doesn't let you record gameplay is stupid through the uh, uh, capture button. Obviously, if you have a capture card, you can record it whatever you want, but it's actually made by Super Flash Brothers. Those are uh, guys that I used to watch when I was younger. I used to watch their uh, OCs like talk about various things like Final Fantasy or going going to Japan or Soul Calibur or whatever. Soul Coke. It's a cute game. Uh, I've, I've not been able to play with friends. I know there's there's puzzles that you can only play multiplayer, and I'd really like to play that with friends. But I haven't found the time or the friends that are able to do it. That'd be nice if I was able to do that. But overall, um, Snipper Clips Plus is a great game. It's not that expensive. I'd say pick it up if, if you can find it for cheap. Finally, in this batch of recordings, we have SNK Heroines uh, Tag Team Frenzy. Yes, indeed. It's, uh, it's an SNK game also published by uh, uh, NIS America, although no special goodies inside. Um, it is a cool game. I think it's a cool party game. I wish more people played it online. I think it kind of got a bad rep as a uh, fighting game because it's not exactly your typical fighting game. I don't think it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be more of a hyper casual experience. Definitely for people who enjoy the SNK style of game, but also some people who like fan service. I bought all the DLC even though I really shouldn't know because I, mean, I, I think the DLC practice is predatory. But I think those characters should have been included in the game for free. But what can you do? The game itself is more of like a smash clone sort of thing where you use basic com combos from certain binding combinations as opposed to doing like traditional combos through something like an actual fighting game. You switch between characters sort of akin to a Tekken tag tournament, uh, but there's party items kind of like uh, Smash as well. There's items that help you in battle, some useful, some not so useful. Uh, in general, the final boss is interesting because typically you you require you require to uh, you know build up a meter in order to uh, do a special and then that special is used for when people are really low on health in the danger zone. Use that special, you finish the battle. But the boss itself has two health bars, and uh, in general, their two health bars are used as a, sort of a buffer for when when they can attack and when they can use specials and when, when you can beat them sort of thing. And uh, I believe after this next game we will be done... Oh. I gotta be careful with this freaking pile that I developed. Oh shit, you just heard some of it. With Japanese imports, and we only have one more Asian game to cover after that. So let's get to it. The next game is the last Platinum game as well. It alphabetically came right before the last Mystery Dungeon game and the last Pseudo Gaia. But it is a game called Soul Cresta, and I, ha and I have the limited edition box. You know, some damage on the uh, actual paint. Believe it or not, it's glow in the dark. I found that out while I was going to bed one night and I had it on my shelf. Believe it or not, I taped this because uh, the original tape came off. You can see it kind of rubbed off right here. And uh, it has the rating and whatnot. And uh, if you flip it over, it has like some artwork. And on the front, it actually has nothing when you until you finish the artwork with this little thing right here. I mean, Japanese games and CDs tend to do that, which I really find annoying. Inside, you get sort of a super deluxe sort of instruction booklet with, uh, you know, some artwork and whatnot. It's pretty cool. And you also get a card, a card. And while I'm at it, I might as well show you the uh, Demon Turf card that I uh, that came with the game as well. So here is in question the Super Deluxe Series 1 sort of platinum card. Here is my limited run card for Demon Turf. Yep, pretty cool card, and it's a gold, which other ones are silver, I don't know what the hell that means. There's a few things I forgot to mention before we move on. It comes with a manual, not exactly the beefiest manual, but certainly not pathetic. And I forgot to mention how the gameplay is. Let's go through that really quickly. The game is a shoot 'em up it's actually visually not very good. But once you turn on the pixelated filter, it actually becomes quite the visually pleasing game. The game's hard, um, the game has this really complicated system of like switching ships and 
into like various shapes and like trying to move in certain ways. It's like really overly complicated and uh, it's not exactly the best to play, but I do enjoy it. Now I did pay 4078 on Surugaya for uh, Soul Crescent, another thing I forgot to talk about. I don't think that's actually a good deal. I kind of wish I paid a cheaper price for it. Out of all the ones that I've paid for, that one is one that I don't exactly like the fact I paid that much for. Guess who's back, back, back. Back again, again, again. Shit, I can't go too long or else I'll get copyright claimed. I'm sure if you told it, it might have already been copyright claimed. I mean, one of those Nintendo songs might have got dinged. I have no idea. Or one of the songs I'm going to be using in the future. Who knows? It's Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town. This was definitely inspired by, uh, not Harvest Moon, because that's what it originally was, but by the imitation of Harvest Moon, Stardew Valley. So really, it's just the, the successor to the original is aping off the successor uh, in spirit, uh, Stardew Valley, if that makes any sense, because if anyone's not familiar with the history of Harvest Moon, or in this case, Story of Seasons, let me explain. So Natsume originally published a game called Harvest Moon on the Super Nintendo and therefore owns the rights to the phrase Harvest Moon. Because in Japan, the series is not called Harvest Moon, it's called something. I, I'll put it up on screen. Every subsequent Harvest Moon game would be called Harvest Moon blank of blank, whatever. The original idea of Harvest Moon was spearheaded by one guy. It was his vision to create this farming game with dating and whatnot. And then I guess at some point he got tired of making them. He left and then later on, uh, the, the company kept making them in general, you know, under the Harvest Moon name, but I, but I guess what happened was Natsume wanted more money. I don't know what happened, but basically something fell through where the company that made uh, Harvest Moon ended up forming into, into Marvelous, previously called something else, I believe. Marvelous and Xseed, you know, were a joint publishing venture, and, and since then, uh, they publish every game under the title A Story of Seasons which is more similar to what it's called in Japan, I believe, which is why they chose it. That's that's actually, uh, if you play a Harvest Moon game that is made by Natsume for any console, like, after 3DS, basically, it's probably not actually a Harvest Moon game, because what you should be playing is Story of Seasons. To wrap this up, this is the most recent Story of Seasons game. It, like I said before, it's definitely inspired by, uh, by Stardew Valley. It takes uh, notes from it and uses it to make its own sort of unique twist on the game. I haven't played much of it, and I was told by somebody who has played more of it that it relies a bit too much on building and, and resource farming as opposed to actually like engaging with the town aspect and, and uh, actually like it, it tries to be more sort of like a Minecrafty sort of Terraria thing as opposed to you know Stardew Valley's kind of hybrid of that mixed with uh, the Harvest Moon elements. I think you can tell by the cover looking at all these things that are going on on the actual cover itself. It has a beefy manual but that's to be expected from Marvelous. Marvelous. Yes I'm bringing it back. It's kind of a cute little uh, guise because it's kind of poised as a Olive Town tourist guide, which I think is kind of cute. I mean, I haven't played Rune Factor very much. I haven't played Story of Seasons very much. I mean, am I really a, a town life farm simulator fan or am I not? This next game is a game I've included in a few Switch compilations that I've done. And again, I'm not sorry for doing a whole bunch of them as of recent. They're easy to pump out. I enjoy doing them. I'm going to keep doing them. And uh, this is the game in question. It's <laughs> it's backwards. It's Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. Let me clarify some things about the actual game itself. It is a Unity uh, based remake of the original two games. I guess Deluxe as well, with uh, not as good physics, doesn't have the same octagonal sort of movement and, uh, and ball uh, velocity, as well as uh, ability of finagling in the uh, in the original. There are microtransactions, which I don't like. I wish everything came included in the base game. Yes, indeed, I did buy the uh, non-special edition, which I get there's only one edition, but but I, yeah, I bought the game without the slipcase and the stupid art book because it would take up too much room and it's annoying. So uh, no art book to show here. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it's a game with a monkey. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. I'm a banana eating monkey. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, ah, ah. 
What do you want me to say? It's Super Monkey Ball. First, we got Sushi Strikers Way of the Sushido. I mentioned this game a long time ago in the video. Definitely a long time ago in actual days. I mentioned that, I, that uh, this game I got for $12, which I indeed did get for $12 on eBay. Now you can get it for even cheaper. For being a Nintendo published game made by a Nintendo studio, you think it would go for more, but really no. It's one of the few games that didn't maintain its value at all. Like new, you can, you can get this game for ridiculously cheap. Really like i mean is it worth it i only played it literally once i'm not even kidding you and then that was it i never touched it ever again looks cool i guess i mean graphically it's okay i know it's based off a 3ds game and the 3ds game which again is like literally the same game was cheaper than the freaking like switch version for some reason they upcharged the switch version despite being almost exactly the same it's kind of ridiculous when you think about it uh let's go towards some actual games yes some games yeah i'm actually going to include games as part of a kind of an addendum to my switch video it's uh teenage mutant ninja turtles shredder's revenge no i said the longest thing yeah it's it's uh it's a freaking beat em up Speaking of beat em ups, I know I just showed the grip, but it's a freaking beat em up made by some of the same people by Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, but not really because, you know, there's a whole story, but basically the game was originally created in one studio in, in uh, the West, but then that studio uh, gave up on it, and then a studio in uh, China or Taiwan, I don't remember exactly where, I'll put it up on the screen, they single handedly uh, worked on the game, the rest of the game, for like less than a year. It's insane how long it took, like how short it took, I should say. And uh, so it's probably not the same devs, but it does feel a lot similar to Scott Pilgrim and also by extension River City Ransom because Scott Pilgrim is basically just River City Ransom but with a different skin. But this is great. This is a great evolution of the formula. I like the fact that you can play six players at once. That's pretty freaking cool if I do say so myself. Uh, and guess what? It didn't just come with a game, it came with a soundtrack, a CD, a full-fledged CD and uh it's made to look in the style of an old PC game. If I take this out, let me take this out real quick. It freaking has a little pizza on it. And, uh, and on the back, it has a track listing. It is in English, the track listing, and it is compatible with any CD player because CDs are not region locked, unlike DVDs and Blu-rays. That's pretty freaking cool. And by the way, not, not all Blu-rays are region locked because obviously you can play PS4 games and PS3 games and Xbox you know, One and Xbox Series S and X games in multiple regions, and those are made from blu-ray so there you go so um next up is another collectible another collectible from teenage mutant ninja turtle shredders revenge it's an acrylic stand look at this baby right here it's a nice little acrylic stand that i put together myself so uh be proud of me because i know i'm a boss yes indeed uh yeah it's a nice little acrylic stand the bottom says teenage mutant ninja turtles shredders revenge which i've been having a lot of trouble saying which is funny but yeah it's a nice stand with all the boys Boys, all the turtle boys. I wish it had all the playable characters, but it doesn't because it's small. Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE Encore. I know a freaking mouthful of a title, I swear to God. But yeah, um, this game I played actually a little bit more than I played Sushi Strikers, but not much more actually. It, it's a, it's an RPG, which, you know, I am an RPG guy, unlike Scott the Waz. Uh, I used to not be an RPG guy, just like Scott the Waz. I'm the same age as him, by the way. I mean, I know, I know you probably couldn't tell by the way we look. I also have more hair than him. Hashtag burn! He's balding. Basically, Tokyo Mirage Sessions is like a sort of original uh, Fire Emblem slash Shin Megami Tensei style game that I really like. Um, I think the story is kind of interesting. I, I can't wait to play more of it. Um, yeah, um, this this game is one of the few Wii U games before the Switch that I think is, is deserving to be you know put, put on a pedestal because the original didn't sell well on Wii U and was completely forgotten about. This is basically just the, the, the original version because nobody played the Wii U version. It, it, need, it needs more love. And finally, on today's lightning round, we have Toho Kabuto First Battle V. There's only two versions of this game. There's the original and the one for Vita that was ported over to Switch. Hence why it's V, not because of Phi, because of Vita. Yes, um, this game is a cool Toho sort of uh, fighting style game with shooting elements 3D wise. Um, it's literally just the PC version which I played to try it out. I had to find some really obscure link to play the game, but I played it. I, I ran it and this is basically the same game, just upgraded. I mean, I don't know why I just didn't just go ahead and just buy it I mean because I bought it off Mercari but I was really hesitant to buy it because I thought you know it wouldn't be very good it's an NIS release it's one of their early releases where they didn't put any goodies or good stuff in there they just left uh, a 
basic ass box with like literally almost nothing inside besides a bunch of just boring ass text which nobody likes truth be told i mean this is before nas really got a foothold on the collector's market like they do now so uh yeah um switch is now booming and so that's why they upped their game so yes uh that was a bit of a lightning round and it's gonna keep going faster and faster baby let's freaking a go it's a uh, toho Hmm, what is this called? Toho Spell Bubble? Something like that. It's a puzzle bobble game slash rhythm game slash Toho game where you where you listen to great Toho songs. This is a uh, this is a Taiwanese slash Hong Kong slash whatever copy. Um, it's an Asian copy, I should say. Um, yeah, it's actually one of my uh, one of my I think it's my second Asian copy ever. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah, um, there's a lot of DLC for it. Probably not gonna buy any of the DLC because. I'm pretty happy with the, with the game as it stands. I'm pretty good at the game, which I'm very happy about. And in general, it's a really, really fun and addictive game. I think it's very much good. It's, I didn't realize it was officially Taito licensed, so the Puzzle Bobble, uh, like, you know, idea and branding is, like, all over it, which I think is insane. Which, by the way, that's a whole other kind of divergent subject, but... The whole sort of puzzle bobble bust a move debacle is kind of crazy. Do some research on that. I'm not gonna go into it. Let's move on to the next game, which is Windjammers 2. Yet another limited run. The actual developer is .emu, and Windjammers is, I believe, a uh, SNK property. Man, uh, Windjammers 2 is fun as hell. I wish people actually played online, because I remember when the demo came out on Steam, people were playing online. It was super fun to play, random people online. It'd be a great game to play with friends, too, if I had any. And uh, Windjammers 2 is hard. I'm not very good at it, but I have managed to beat the story once on easy mode, and I've got gotten decently far on normal mode but not far enough to beat the game. The graphics are good. I don't like the voices for a lot of the characters. I, I think a lot of them are ill-fitting and very annoying and repetitive. This is another game I have featured on my Clips channel. Shh, don't tell anybody, but it's Mads Mitski. Yeah, I'm giving it a double shout out this video. I featured it in a video where I showed random clips from my Switch. And this one is another one that comes with a manual, manual squad hype. I, I don't think I've actually ever played the original Windjammers, so I know there is a physical for that, where you can buy that, and uh, or maybe there's not a physical, I'll put it on screen if there is, but I know it, it has been ported to modern consoles, and I, I haven't played it, so I can't tell you whether or not it's any good, but I know Windjammers 2 is good, so there's that, and it kind of reminds me of Lethal League, but the original Wind, Windjammers was actually one of the inspirations for Lethal League. We're approaching the end, people. Strap in, because this is the last few games. I say few, I mean, I... I think if you're counting by now, you'll know how much is left. Anyway, next up is we're finally at the W. That being Witch Spring 3, Refine the Story of A. Rudy, or I. Rudy. I don't know how to say it. It's not exactly an English word. Let's put it that way. Yes, this is originally a mobile game. It had microtransactions, I believe, in the original version, but on the Switch version, they got rid of it. But it's actually a good mobile game. It's like a good RPG with uh, light sort of crafting elements. 
It has sort of like upgrading like familiar elements as well. It follows the plot of a witch named Arudi or Irudi, I don't know what the hell her name actually is. And basically she uh, encounters people outside of her witch hut. Adventure ensues and basically from there you figure out what you're gonna do to get back to where you once were and helping your friends that you make along the way. Yes indeed, this game is very basic when it comes to graphics. It has quite beautiful little artwork right here. Let me get closer so I can show you that. Um, yeah, Witch Spring 3, look at that, it's so beautiful. Now unfortunately, it just has artwork on the back, no manual. But I like this package. It's actually uh, published by Inning Games, which uh, I really want to buy more stuff from them. I just just haven't found something that I, I think is worth the money yet. But they, they make very good games. Uh, at least they publish very good games in my opinion. Now we're at Y. Yes, there's no X game. But there is a Y game. It's Ease. What number is this? This is 9. Ease 9. Monstrum Nox. Packed Edition. And believe it or not, it's Manual Squad Hype. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah, like like I said before, it actually has a code, just like a lot of the other NES games that I can't show. Otherwise, you'd be able to steal it. Uh, but yeah, if you look inside, it actually has an alternate cover on the back. This is an NIS release, hence why it has all the goodies inside. So it's a late NIS release. Uh, I played Ease 8. Uh, I thought it was all right, but Ease 9 seems to be a lot better. It seems to be more sort of up my style. I played something like Tokyo Xanadu, which this definitely reminds Reminds me of because it's made by the same studio and in general I, I love the style of a uh, RPG and action RPG that Falcom puts out same thing with the Legends of Cold Steel and all that I, I like those games too although I barely played the Legends of Cold Steel I know it's it's crazy right considering the the fan base for that game is so rabid so rabid indeed not braving rabbits just rabid this game follows our titular protagonist did you just say tit that's a game sack reference Adol, that's the name of the protagonist. I had to look inside the manual to find out. Yes, you play as your as your uh, typical protagonist in every Ease game, Adol. Although he's kind of like Zelda and Link in the sense that I say that you know I almost called Link Zelda. Each generation, uh, a new um, a new Zelda comes about, a new Link comes about, a new Ganondorf and Ganon comes about, and so on and so forth. So in the same way, a new, new Adol comes every generation as to how I look at it. It's not the same Adol in each game, although that might be entirely BS and that just might be my head cannon. Who knows? Uh, yes, um, the music in this game is great. The graphics are actually pretty decent for Switch. Pretty good, actually, in my opinion. It wouldn't be good anywhere else, but Switch, I think they're just fine. Hi, Train, what's up? I'm Matt. Hey guys, what's up? It's raining now. So we got the last two gains for you here. First up, and second to last up it's Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution and guess what comes inside Yu-Gi-Oh! cards woo and a little switch icon right here it's a Yu-Gi-Oh! game I previously owned a Yu-Gi-Oh! game for the GBA which I, I consider the best Yu-Gi-Oh! game I own but this surpasses it it is a Konami game without loot boxes Without bullshit, without pachinkos, no microtransactions, no DLC in general. It comes with all the DLC from the previous version. It's feature complete, it's it's a reasonable price, and it's feature packed. Like, what is wrong with Onami? How can they do this awesome ass thing and not do anything else right? It's like that's the, one of the few things they don't fuck up is Yu-Gi-Oh. How? How do they not fuck up Yu-Gi-Oh? It contains all the uh, scenarios from all the anime up until this point. Obviously the current anime they can't show entirely otherwise they'd be spoiling things but other than that you know it's pretty cool that they have all the Yu-Gi-Oh stuff you know in one package it's really cool and I've showed clips of it on my channel before so you definitely get to see what it's like playing the game I mean I usually fumble my way through Yu-Gi-Oh I'm not exactly the most advanced player but I make do in general I would say pick this up it is a freaking steal pick it up second to last is a game another game with a manual and uh, like with all uh, NAS releases, or at least most of them, also comes with a code that I can't show you. Thankfully, it is co covered up. Yes, it is Yuru Kill the Calumniation Games. Not Calumnation, which is a word, but Calumniation. What the fuck does that mean? It's also by Izanagi Games. If you look inside, it comes with a manual, which manual squad hype for the last time today. It's actually a mini art book. It's not a manual, so 
mini art book hype, how about that? It's a Danganronpa clone, except for instead of you playing a, like, Phoenix Wright segment, instead you play a shoot 'em up segment. Kind of annoying, it comes with a large patch on launch, which is not good. The story is quite silly, I tend to sort of skip the details, which gets me in trouble because you're supposed to pay attention, because there is a segment where, where it makes the shoot 'em up easier and gives you more lies, depending on what answers you get right. And uh, I play on, on normal mode, because hard is just way too hard. I think it's called like Lunatic, it's kind of based off the whole bullet hell idea, but I just suck at it so much. I had I had to lower the difficulty, which you can't can't raise up once once you've lowered it. That's okay. And it was just way too insanely hard, and I got so frustrated with it. But once I lowered the difficulty, the game became a lot better to play. I think this is actually underrated. Your Yuru kill is underrated, and I think it deserves more love. Last, and actually I would say almost least, is Zoid's uh, Wild Blast Unleashed. Yes, it is a another anime-based game. I don't, I've never seen the anime. It's some kid show. It's basically a 3D fighter, similar to like the Naruto games that I, I dearly love, made by CyberConnect. It's kind of like that, except for it's not made by CyberConnect. It's sort of a Gundam-style like animal mech anime. I've never heard of it, but basically it has an extensive campaign where you can play, uh, you can play um, mech games and have lots of fun beating people up with your special moves and spam and stuff. So yeah, um, story sucks, but it's a kid's show, what do you expect? I'll see you in the next video! Peace! It's like, just kidding! I tricked you! Woo! And finally, presenting the last game in this video, performing the National Anthem. Please take off your hats and shove a finger up your ass for the Zombie National Anthem. It's Zombie Army 4 Dead War. It's a Chinese release slash Hong Kong. Yes, it's uh, the last Asian release of this video. And the last game of this video. It's alphabetically the last one. I played a decent chunk of this. I actually got pretty far, started raging, and decided to take a massive break. I haven't played it ever since. Um, this actually comes with a lot of DLC that I can't buy because it's on the Hong Kong eShop. And uh, it's also freaking expensive as hell, the DLC. I only installed the free one, that being the Left 4 Dead one. Which, thank God, that one's free because it's my favorite. I like it. Um, I know some people are more a fan of the, of the Army Trilogy as opposed to the fourth game due to the mechanics they've introduced, but I quite like it. Um, but I'm constantly running low on health and I wish there was more health pickups. It's just my opinion, but I know some people might disagree. The graphics, oh my god, the graphics are really good. It is like a fantastic port by Rebellion. Rebellion nailed it out of the freaking park, man. It is great, great port. I mean, honestly, it's like console quality like last gen console quality port, like PS4, Xbox One, stuff like that. And I, and I own the, the Army Trilogy on uh, on PC and uh, I played a decent chunk of that, but I, I pr probably got around the same amount of uh, distance in the Army Trilogy as I have gotten in Army 4. I just noticed on the back, back of this, when it comes to uh, the rating, one of the things I mentioned is that it has ghosts. Ghouls or zombies count as ghosts. That's specifically a ghost label because China hates ghosts for some reason. <laughs> that's why it's 18 plus, which it should be, but that's really funny that it's a specific ghost label. So I guess that's it. That's all I gotta say. Kind of a silly note to end on, but them's the breaks. Anyway, uh, I'll see you all in a few months when I upload again. Bye bye! <laughs> Now we're on to the Japanese style of games. And first is a Ryakuma game. I don't know what it's called. I'll put it up on screen like I always do. Yep, uh, this is a game for Babby. It's a little bitty like Animal Crossing style game mixed with like, you know, Project Diva mini games and you know, a little playground shit that you basically just play with cute little animals. It's very bare bones. I overpaid the shit out of it. I bought it off a Japanese website and imported it. It took, it went, it came by really fast, but goddamn was it so expensive. But it was cheaper to get it through the online store than it was through actually like going through Amazon or eBay or whatever. So yeah, uh, in general, uh, don't pick this up. This is dumb.
Pamper Baby. Next up is a game which recently actually saw a Western release, although no physical Western release. Although the actual physical cartridge doesn't come with an English version, which is really freaking annoying because I paid out the ass for it. I also paid for it on that Japanese website I just mentioned. Uh, yes, this is called Shinj. I'm looking at the title on another screen. That's how long the freaking title is. Shin Chan, Me and the Professor on Summer Vacation, The Endless Seven Day Journey. This is based off a series that was previously Japanese exclusive from a a very small company called Neos Corporation. It's basically a predecessor slash around the same time a uh, sir to uh, Animal Crossing, but it takes place over a, over a vacation. They, they were planning on doing a winter vacation one. For the most part, it's either fall or summer or spring. In sunny times, you take a vacation, you go to a separate town. In this case, it's based off the Shin-chan property. Yes, indeed. You basically just uh, do little fun uh, tasks and just walk around and have fun collecting shit and occasionally doing mini games. It's very short, very cozy. Uh, does this have a manual? No, it has a code. And the code is, as always, is expired. Does the other game have a code? Let me find out. It does indeed have a code. It's right here. Although I don't think you can use it. If you could, go ahead and use it. I don't give a shit. It comes with one of those weird Japanese post office shit that they come with. I don't know why they come with it. This just in, baby. I got a game from Japan. It's a uh, Radergy Swag. Let's unbox it, or let's say unseal it, right? Freaking now. Yeah, I literally just got this from the mail. I decided and everything. So let's freaking unseal it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. It's unsheathed. What's inside? It's this. Wowie, that's weird. I have actually played the Wii game. Wii game is pretty freaking rad. Uh, and the arcade game. I've not played this. Is, is, is it Radergy Swag as well as the Illmatic Swamp or whatever? Yeah, there's like some limited release for this that's sort of a, you know, kind of a scam because they've had on pre-order for the longest time and they're still not shipping it out with TBD, you know, attached to it. So I got the non-scam version, the one that actually comes. I got from a seller from Japan. He was very nice. I'm going to give him a positive rating once we're done with this. Bada bing. Uh, bada boom. Skis. Now cue the music. Finally, and this is actually finally, like the finale of this video, and then I can finally uh, process it, upload it, make the thumbnail, everything be done. Katana Kami by Spike Chunsoft. It's the other company, Acquire. Acquire is the other company that makes it. It's based off the Way of the Samurai uh, property. It's a spin off of that, and it's kind of like a Souls like, except for it's like a dungeon crawler sort of mystery dungeon game. But it's got sword mechanics, and it's got a debt mechanics, and you help, help save somebody's daughter, and there's ghosts and spooky shit and whatnot. And you go through a tree, and also it has like asynchronous multiplayer just like Dark Souls. And the Japanese fan base that plays it still does to this day. And I've gone in and played sessions where I've trolled Japanese players and uh, killed them and shit and, and be a dick because I'm that kind of guy. And uh, so they probably don't like me very much. But it's actually a great time. I really like it. Uh, it has a bounty system where um, if somebody's like a real asshole and if you kill them, you get a lot of money, which can help pay off debt and whatnot. I don't know what the end game looks like, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty freaking cool and underrated in my opinion. Bye!